It's one of the great showcases in college sports. Two football powerhouses, too close, too passionate to share the limelight. UCLA has the streak, winning eight consecutive meetings, but 99 has been unkind until a former four-string quarterback gave them unexpected life a week ago. Can he do the same today? Their unpredictable rival has one more chance, a disappointing season so easily forgotten, their legacy remembered as the team that beat the Bruins. A century of memories comes to an end next on ABC. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to an overcast day in the Coliseum in Los Angeles. This crosstown rivalry between UCLA and USC. Hello, everybody. I'm Charlie Jones. This is the big day in college football from the game on the East Coast to the big game on the West Coast and all stops in between. And this is one of the biggest of the biggest, UCLA and USC dating back to 1929. Bragging rights for the rest of your life. Working with me is Dan Fouts, and the players are really up for this one. Charlie, the players really don't care about the fans. They don't care about the alumni, the coaches, or the teams that came before them. They care about themselves. This is a player's game. They're going to be responsible for the outcome of this one. And regardless of if you won eight in a row or you've lost eight in a row, the pressure is the same for each player. It's unbearable at times. A lot of parallels in the ball game. Disappointing seasons, lots of injuries, and an interesting matchup at quarterback. Well, even the parallel, they both wear the same number. For USC, Jayon John Fox, he's been here before. He's done that. He's played in this ball game. But for Ryan McCann, he's a redshirt freshman that's been on a heck of a trip from four string to starter in this ball game. But in Danny Farmer's words, Farmer likes catching passes from left-handers. You know, McCade, McNown. And UCLA has the streak. They've won the last eight in a row. But Chad Morton, the starting tailback for USC, guaranteed a Trojan victory back in August. We're up next. Seniors being introduced here to a sellout crowd of more than 92,000. And remember, these seniors have never tasted victory in this ball game. USC leads all time, 34-27 with seven ties. The first meeting was way back in 1929. During the, in the early 30s, they didn't play for three or four years, but during the war years, because of travel, they played twice. They played each other twice during the season during, wor during World War II. Now let's go down and join Todd Harris. Todd? Thank you, Charlie. Well, it's a well-known fact that UCLA coach Bob Toledo likes to use trick plays. Well, the last few weeks, he's turned to Hollywood for motivation. Two weeks ago, he used highlights of UCLA's best plays of the years intermixed with the movie Rocky for motivation. Last week, before they beat Washington, he showed the team Fight Club. This week, before getting to the stadium this morning, he showed the team eight years of domination over USC, and the last thing they saw was tailback Chad Morton guaranteeing victory for USC. The rivalry is so bad that even the bands are trash talking. So we'll see what happens today. Back to you, Charlie. Oh, these bands have been trash talking for years. Here are the Pac-10 standings. And of course, you see at the top, Stanford. They are playing uh, California today, a Stanford victory. They go to the Rose Bowl. UCLA and USC, well, they're down near the bottom. Only uh, Washington State is below them with a 1-6 record. But that doesn't make any difference today, does it, Dan? Well, not really, Charlie. Both uh, Stanford and Cal, they'll be kicking off the same time as we are, as will the Apple Cup up at uh, Seattle. So uh, we'll get, we're going to get a chance to keep our eye on both those games. And, of course, the Civil War in Oregon between the Beavers and the Ducks is always a great one. All right, and here's what is going on today. California Stanford, as you see now. What happens with the road? If Stanford went, boom, they go. That's slam dunk. If Stanford loses and Washington wins, then the Huskies go. If Stanford and Washington both lose, then guess what? Dan, Oregon goes. And if Washington and Oregon lose, Stanford goes. We'll have a quiz on that at halftime. Well, <laughs> we, we'll update it. We should know, at least uh, by the time this ball game's over, Stanford, of course, controls their fate. And, uh, but uh, it's never easy playing against your rival. And never easy when you, you're going up against a defensive team like the Cal Bears. And my, uh, my Stanford friends, all say that they're really worried because they, they're the favorite, and when they're the favorite, they don't play that well against California. Talk about a man who might be a little bit worried, Paul Hackett, looking for his first win in his second season against UCLA. 
UCLA will get the ball first on offense, so we'll get a chance to check out the uh, young quarterback who was a hero last week, Ryan McCann. And it's a great job he did, especially in the second half against the Huskies. And Ball Hackett told us yesterday, he said, quote, we need to finish in a flourish. And they certainly do. Jermaine Lewis, number 23, and Ryan Rock, number 33, are the deep, the deep backs on the kickoff return. David Bell will kick it away for the Trojans, and we're underway in the Coliseum. About five yards deep, go down and bring it out to the 20 yard line. Now, the Chile starting lineup for UCLA. Their offensive line, James Gezzi of Montrose, is the senior along that front five, and he is the starting uh, center. Only has about, last time he played center was he was a freshman in high school. Now, the receivers. They are all seniors and they're all looking for great games. Danny Farmer particularly has been outstanding in this series. And Darrell Price, the fullback, is the only senior among the running backs and the quarterback. So UCLA starts from the 20-yard line. And they start with Deshaun Foster, who scored four touchdowns in his ball game a year ago. And Charlie on defense, we see the strength of the Trojans. It's at front four. They are ranked second in the Pac-10 against the run. The linebackers feature junior Marcus Steele, who's one of today's game captains for the Trojans. And in the secondary, true freshman Daryl Rideau replaces Antoine Simmons. And senior David Gibson gets his last shot at the Bruins. The Trojans won the toss, and they deferred. That's the reason the Bruins have the ball. And we have flags flying on the possibility of a false start. Dead ball, false start, offense, five yard penalty, still second down. Jim Springer is the referee. Now, young center, young and not a lot of reps, maybe 50 total last week. Young quarterback, you, we always hear, but, but as a quarterback, what, what happened? Well, Charlie, on this case, uh, you you do you hit it right on the head when you said young quarterback, and they got to get used to his snap count, uh, his cadence. They had problems. Gezi and McCann had problems last week. They fumbled two exchanges. Both of them were turned over. And we may have another one. Michael Webb, the right tackle, number 77. Dead ball. Ball start. Offense. Five-yard penalty. Still second down. As far as our Dell Games solutions are concerned, we asked Coach Toledo in what areas he thought the game would turn. We can't have fumble snaps because we've got a new center and a quarterback. Uh, the, the running back's got a hold on the football. We can't throw foolish interceptions. Uh, uh, and then uh, we just got to be able to block and run hard and, and make first downs. Uh, and hopefully somebody comes up with some big plays. And then defensively, I, I think one of the keys is that we need to pressure the quarterback. And Foster came behind in a, a moving screen right behind center. They let the Trojans filter through, and it was the perfect call, Dan. Charlie, this is a play that killed UCLA against Arizona State on the last play of the game. The uh, Sun Devils beat UCLA with this exact same play. It is a uh, screen to the halfback coming from the right side of the screen. You'll see there is Foster. Now he's got the convoy down the sidelines. He's pointing out to uh, both Freddie Mitchell and Danny Farmer. He wants them to block big play on a second and very, very long. Gain of 24 and the first down. Deshaun Foster trying the right side from the 34-yard line. He goes out to about the 37. So it'll be second down and seven after a gain of three with Marcus Steele making the tackle. Charlie, you got to go back to that uh, screen pass that just ran. And, uh, what a brilliant call that was by Al Borges. The Trojans uh, were got a gift with those two penalties, and they were coming after McCann. They were going to pressure him, try to get in his face. Perfect call for that situation. Second down and seven, opening drive of the ball game, no score. McCann has pressure, scrambles, and he'll be sacked. He's dropped by Lonnie Ford. Ford gets his fourth sack of the year. This is where the offensive line for the Bruins is really going to be tested. The speed of Lonnie Ford 
number 25. Here he is out here working against Michael Webb. And there's a mix up in the protection there. Ford comes free. And he gets the sack his third of the year. Third down and 12 from the shotgun. Pressure and a delay to the right side. Again behind the line of scrimmage to Foster. Chris Richard, the first Trojan to get there. Marcus Steele was the second. That will bring up fourth down. And Nate Pixie will come in to kick it away. Bill Young, the defensive coordinator for the Trojans, said they're going to pressure Ryan McCann almost every play. They know they can't blitz him all the time, but they are going to send a message early in this ball game. Chad Morton is the return man for the Trojans. The man who guaranteed the victory is back at his own 24-yard line. A little bit of a shaky start for the Bruins with a makeshift offensive line. Good kick. Morton backs up. Has it at the 13-yard line and is dropped in his trap. Maybe a yard on the return, and that's going to be all. Now for an update, let's go to New York City, and here's John Saunders. All right, Charlie, here on the Burger King update, as you know, Stanford trying to wrap up the Big Ten with a win over Cal. Brian Allen finds a hole and busts through 22 yards for the touchdown. Stanford on the board first with a 7-0 lead, but then the kickoff. Delta O'Neill, 101 yards, kickoff return for a touchdown. He has four interceptions for touchdowns this year. That's an NCAA record. And now this, 101 down the sidelines. This game is tied early. Charlie. We have flag here. Our game is tied early also, but it's tied at 0-0. And Cal Stanford play all kinds of things haven't done it now. Good ball. Ball start. Offense. Five-yard penalty. Still first down. And it, John, John will be interested to know that uh, in college, they do not allow for extra yardage uh, in the end zone. So Delta O'Neill's uh, return will go down as a 100-yarder. But it'll also go on the scoreboard tying the big game up. That's right. You bet. All right, SC call for the same penalty that uh, the Bruins were nailed twice in a row, and that's that false start. Here's Morton on the left side, dives down from the nine to about the 12, started to about the 12-yard line. Now let's check in with Chile starting lineups for USC's offense. They have uh, two seniors on the starting line, Dante Kendrick, number 70, and Travis Clears, number 71, the right tackle. There's two receivers. No, only one now because Marcel Almond is starting for R.J. Soward, so... Uh, Windrell Hayes is the only senior in that package of receivers and uh, backs at quarterback again two seniors Chad Morton who just carried and uh, John Fox the quarterback and a special day for the seniors as always a special day for uh, all the players that Dan was talking about in the ballgame now we have an officials timeout doing a little housekeeping back around the 40 or 45 yard line and we'll get set to go it'll be second down and 13 we have no score and the Trojans are deep in their own territory. From UCLA standpoint, if a good defensive stand here, their defense has been playing pretty well recently, and forcing the Trojans to punt. They can come up with pretty good field position early in the ball game. You know, Charlie, you got to give the Bruins a little edge here first because uh, they've knocked the stuffing out of the helmet of Brent McCaffrey. The officials went back to midfield. It, it was a pad out of his helmet. So uh, Mark one up for the Bruins. They've got the first stuffing knocker outer. <laughs> and we'll keep that as a separate category. You know, there'll be a lot today, too. Play action fake, blocks the throw. Right flat, pass is complete. Goes to the fullback, Charlie Landergan. And Ryan Neese was there for the Bruins. Charlie on defense for UCLA today. Senior captain Pete Holland plays his final game for the Bruins. He had six tackles against Washington last week. Good solid play from a deep linebacking core was key against the Huskies. And seniors Ryan Rock and Joey Strykula will lead a secondary that I guarantee you will be challenged by the speed of these wide receivers of USC. First crucial play in the ballgame for the Trojans. Third down and six. The ball on their own 18-yard line. with good protection, drops this one over the middle. Pass is complete to Windrill Hayes. And he's going to be right at the first down marker. Let's see if he got it, and he should by maybe half a yard. And he does. 
So SC converts on third down and six in their opening drive of the ballgame. Here it is again. Well, it was third and six, Charlie, and when Windrell Hayes catches this ball, he still needs two yards. Look at the uh, yard marker he's got to get to here out to the 24 yard line. Look at this effort as he gets by true freshman Marcus Reese for the first down. First down, 25 yard line. Morton slips a couple of tackles at the line of scrimmage. He's going to pick up five yards on the play to the 30 yard line where Julius Williams, who is starting at the free safety, replacing LaBelle Houston, who is out with a concussion, makes the tackle. Charlie, I know you did the USC Washington State game last week and you saw Chad Morton's effort. Uh, the key to it was the fact that they rested him more in the first half. They used Sultan McCullough and Malifo McKenzie and even Jabari Jackson. So he was more effective. He was a lot stronger in the second half last week against the Cougars. Morton, the remaining back. Box to throw. Morton blocked. And it is incomplete. Leading Malifo McKenzie, it's incomplete. The other day we asked Coach Paul Hackett in what areas he thought the game would turn. Here are his Dell game solutions. When you're carrying the football under your arm, you're carrying all of us with you. All the Trojans are under your arm, and, and it's very precious. And in a game like this, with, with the history of this game, I mean, you got to hang on to the ball. And then let's see who the best team is. Did a good job hanging onto the ball last week against Washington State. No turnovers. Jabari Jackson now the remaining back. Third down and five. Three steps up. Right on target. And it, will it be enough? And it should be. This time it was Kareem Kelly, the true freshman. On the receiving end, Joe Hunter with the stop. We talked with Kareem yesterday. I was so impressed, Dan, with the way that he had eye contact with you and with me and the answers that he gave. This young man, what is he, 18 years old? And he'll be 19 next April the 1st. And he leads the Trojans in receiving. A true freshman, uh, but uh, mature beyond his years. He is going to be a great one. He's got it all, the speed and the athleticism to make the tough catch. Speed, 10, 28 in the 100 meters. Electronically timed. Morton slipping to the outside. He's to the 50. A flag is thrown down the sideline, out of bounds, inside the 30-yard line of the Bruins. If it holds up, there are two flags dropped at the four, one at the 43, and one at the 45. One would guess this is holding against USC. The way they're uh, marching backwards going to negate a heck of a run for Chad Ooh. Morton. Penalty against the Trojans. Penalties have just killed USC this year, averaging 10 per game. Holding offense. 10 yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Still first down. I think our guilty party may be Dante Kendrick. Here he is, the right guard, number 70, working against Pete Holland, is up under that left shoulder. And the officials are seeing the point of attack, and that's why the call is made right there. You see that type of block in other places along the line of scrimmage, but they don't call it. They call it when they think an offensive player has got the advantage. Obviously, that time, Kendrick did. And a 35-yard run negated. And also, as a player, somebody had a fistful of jersey. Here's Morton on the right side. Strung out has the corner and will pick up four or five yards on the play before Ryan Rock can take him out of bounds. Talk about pressure on one player and Chad Morton clearly put it on himself when back in uh, training camp in August when asked are you going to beat the Bruins this year he said I guarantee it and you know he also catches a little heat at home from his uh, his brother Johnny who caught the game winner back in 1990. And that was the last time the Trojans won in this contest. Also, Martin has rushed this year coming into the ballgame for 914 yards. He Second also averages 91 yards, so he could go over 1,000 today. Limping off is the center, Eric Denman, number 50 for the Trojans. And Matt McShane, who is a senior from Oakland, comes in to replace him. And McShane has played a lot this year. They alternated quite a bit because of injuries to Denman. So this is a, a, a better situation for USC than it would be for UCLA. Second down and six. 
Still the opening drive for the Trojans. Morton again. He'll be about a yard shy of the first down. Tomorrow it's a rematch of the 1996 MLS inaugural championship game. Eddie Pope and DC United look to win their third championship in four years as they take on the LA Galaxy. The MLS Cup 99 tomorrow live at 10.30 a.m. Pacific on ABC Sports. Third down in the yard. Trojans have converted this drive on third and one and third and five. And Morton will convert on third down and one. He'll go out to close to the 48 yard line. Tony White makes the tackle on the play. All right, the big guy in the circle there was Isaiah Mailo, 330 pound offensive guard. There he is right there. And here he is right here. Now, the key to this play is. He's got 330 pounds, and that offensive line had better get their butts out of the way, or they're going to get hammered in the back by the big guy. And we have a late flag. And it will go against the Bruins. You were telling me yesterday that, uh, that you had a big, big fullback in your offensive lineman complaining about him. You told him. Keep, keep moving, they won't hit you. They better get out of the way, and, and it really does add a little, uh, obviously, a, a lot more power to that uh, point of attack. But those offensive linemen say, hey, don't hit me in the back. We're on the same side. The ball now at the UCLA 38 yard line. No score in the ball game. Fox has pressure from behind, throws it away as he's going down. They're going to call intentional grounding on him. Bruins had a lot of success last week uh, with the blitzes from their cornerback Ricky Manning this time they bring strong safety Joey Strykula intentional grounding offense ball placed at the spot of the pass second down Strykula had the interception last week to uh, turn the ball over in overtime here he is coming totally unblocked Fox sees him too late and that uh, pass right there will get him a flag every time and not a good decision even to try and throw. Just take the loss. Well, the, the danger there is if, if you're hit as you're throwing, the ball might be intercepted. In fact, the Trojans picked one off last week against Washington State. Same thing. And scored a touchdown. Far right side. Pass is complete to Matt Welch, who is now wearing number 98. He also wears 72. He's now a tight end. Let's go down to Todd. Well, Charlie, center Eric Denman, number 50, came out. They took the shoe off. They checked it out. It looks okay. They're rewrapping it right now. They're going to put the shoe back on, get him back in. And big playmaker, R.J. Soward, has yet to enter the game. He's still on the sideline. And the reason he's still on the sideline, did not practice this week. He is still bothered by that hamstring. Three wide receivers. Lost it downfield. And it is caught by Windrell Hayes, who the Trojans say run the best routes and has the best hands. And he showed them there over Eric Whitfield. Yeah, he really did, Charlie. The route was just a fade route on the inside, but it's at the end of this play that uh, makes uh, Windrell Hayes so special. Watch his hands go high in the air over the defensive back. He protects the ball into his body, and then he's looking for extra yards. Big play for USC. And also for John Fox, nice touch on the ball on that long pass. Here's Morton, little dance step to about the six yard line. He'll pick up a couple on the play. Robert Thomas with the tackle. So it's going to be second down and goal to go. You know, even without R.J. Sauer, the uh, Trojans have just a ton of wide receivers. We just saw Windrell Hayes. We've talked about Kareem Kelly, Marcel Almond. But also today, they've gone to Charlie Landrigan out of the backfield, and they hit Matt Welch with his first reception of the year earlier in this drive. So Fox is reading the defense and spreading the ball around. Here's Morton, and he is nailed Come right on. at the line of scrimmage. He'll get to the five, and that's going to be all that he's going to pick up. Pete Holland, the senior from Los Angeles, uh, from, uh, excuse me, Los Altos, leading the defense for the Bruins. So set it at the five. This is the tenth play of the drive. 
with a stop from the LA. Chad Morton down in the middle of that line, and uh, he's shaking up. He's telling him that I'm okay. Just give me a minute, and we'll get that minute maybe. All right, we're going to step aside for a moment. We have no score here at the Coliseum. Don't go away. on its Sunday best with two great David Kelly dramas at 9, 8 central and all new Snoops. We are PIs. We are not cops. We do ugly work. Either you want to be here or not, but if you don't, get the hell out. Then, an explosive new practice. Eugene. Your ex-wife says she got up to take a shower. When she came out of the bathroom, this is what she found. You want to ask our son if he committed murder. It's an all new Snoops, followed by an all new practice. ABC Sunday starting at 9, 8 central. presentation of college football is brought to you by Chrysler giving you back the romance of driving by BASF we don't make a lot of products you buy we make a lot of products that you buy better by Chili's a proud sponsor of ABC college football and by inspired technology with a human touch Nokia connecting people SC started this drive at their own 14 yard line this is the 15th play of the drive it has consumed five minutes and 15 seconds and they converted along the way for third down opportunity. Charlie this is where they really miss R.J. Sauer. Obvious passing situation they'd love to have his athletic ability in there. Third down goal to go five yard line still bothered by that hamstring. Split back both in the block. Blocks the throw incomplete. A diving reception right at the goal line, and it is incomplete. Wendrell Hayes could not come up with it. Joe Hunter for the Bruins had the coverage, and the field goal team will come aboard. Good read on the outside by Fox, finding the mismatch he wants, a senior against a redshirt freshman. They get their feet tangled up just a little bit, and I think that might have affected Hayes as much as it affected Hunter. Should have had that one. From the 13-yard line, an attempt of 23 yards. 22 yards is going to be official. It's gone. And it is right down the middle. And the Trojans are on the board. USC with the early lead over UCLA by a score of three to nothing. We'll be back for the kickoff in just a moment. It all began in a stadium. Then TV brought pro football into your home. But now it's a new era, and your TV just isn't big enough anymore. Log on to Enhanced TV. The most entertaining way to experience Monday night and Sunday night football. Get live up to the minute stats as they happen. Play our exclusive live interactive game and trivia. Experience what other users are raving about. During the game, be part of the action. Go to ESPN.com or NFL.com and log on to Enhanced TV. Subscribers to ESPN the magazine, like Marcus Camby, really look forward to each issue. Here's my magazine. Get 26 issues for a dollar an issue, and this fleece pullover is free. It's a warm, roomy fleece pullover with an embroidered ESPN the magazine logo. Hey, man, it's my ESPN the magazine. Go order your own. Call now for ESPN the magazine and free fleece pullover. Introducing ESPN Extra, the brand new channel for sports fans who can't get enough. 
On ESPN Extra, you get more of the sports you love, like international soccer from countries around the world. Plus, the UEFA Champions League, international auto racing, fitness, and outdoor programming. Plus, there's EXPN, which offers exciting extreme sports programming, all on pay-per-view around the clock all week long. Watch ESPN Now or your program guide to see what's on, then order exactly like you would for a pay-per-view movie. ESPN Extra, you can't do better than that. Back at the Coliseum where the Trojans are on the board. Senior day for both teams. This is Frank Carter from Bishop Montgomery High School in Torrance. He's a special teamer. He's out there now. He's played in every game this season. And Ali Abdul Aziz from St. Joseph High School in Santa Maria. He'd like to pursue a career in broadcasting. Charlie, why would he want to do that? <laughs> because it's fun. Ryan Rock on the return for UCLA. This will be their second opportunity. To move on offense, Matt Dalton, who is the emergency quarterback, also a wide receiver and a special teamer, making the tackle for the Trojan. Now, here's a fan poll. Your opportunity to pick the all-time best, in your opinion, UCLA-USC game. Was it 1939? We narrowed it down. You know, I mean, this, this is the 69th meeting. We didn't want to vote on all of them. 1939, 1944. That was a 13-13 tie. 67 USC winning 21-20, 1990 uh, USC winning 45-42, 93 and 96 UCLA winning both of those. Log on to bowl championship championship series. We'll finish it in a moment as here comes Deshaun Foster around the right side, and he comes out to the 35-yard line. Zeke Marino and the Barney Ohalete with the tackle. Now, and that big hit by Ohalete. He's down on the field. Farmer. Or rather, uh, Deshaun Foster really laid into him yeah, big there. Yards. Trick play for UCLA. We're going to see a few of them today. We've already saw the uh, jailbreak screen to Foster. That was a big play. This reverse didn't get him a lot, but it did send a message to the Trojans that they better be aware. Toledo loves the trick plays. And we'll send a message to vote. Log on to the Bowl Championship Series online, abcsports.com. We'll have uh, the results of the poll Charlie, in the fourth quarter. I'm going to have trouble voting for a game where no points were scored, no foul. <laughs> well, 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 we won't vote on the first two choices. I'll go with that. Here's Deshaun Foster. This time the left side has the corner and has the first down. He's going to get it by just about half a step. You go close to the 42-yard line. Foster's playing with a nagging right ankle injury that's been bothering him. Oh, it seems like forever, but uh, last couple of weeks he's been able to fight through the pain and still have the speed to get to the outside. This is really well blocked by the Bruins. Gabe Cretion, the 89 out in front, seals the corner, and there's that speed as Foster gets the first down. Frank Strong was there. He replaced Oilette. Strong now the free safety. Uh, oh, what, four weeks ago he was a tailback. He moved into free safety, and now he makes the play. Little swing into the right flat to Deshaun Foster, who's become the workhorse of the offense for the Bruins. Abdul Malik, the first Trojan there, the second was Chris Richard. Richard was kind of fun when he talked to him. He asked him about his sleep pattern. He says, This was yesterday. He said, Go sleep tonight. Go sleep tonight. <laughs> Look at this fine, uh, very catchable, accurate pass for Deshaun Foster. When you're throwing the ball to your running backs, your fullbacks, your tailbacks, You've got to be able to put it right in front of their face so they don't have to think about the catch. Jermaine Lewis now in the offensive set. And a little swing to the right side. And he's going to be cut down. Aaron Williams, the senior from Hawthorne and Marcus Steele, along with Zeke Moreno. Charlie, we talked about this makeshift offensive line. Now watch this play here. This is a mistake by Michael Webb. He's going to pull left and has to get out of the way of the guys coming right. Oscar Cabrera and Bryce Boland are on the counter. So this is another example of a team that's just piecing together an offensive line. Loss of a couple, third down and nine. Three wide receivers from the shotgun. Rolling left, buying time. Left-hander throws, goes deep, has his man, and right off target. He goes to Freddie Mitchell the second. <laughs> Dennis Mitchell's 34th reception of the year. 
he got a couple of steps on Daryl Rideau, who has replaced Antoine Simmons, who normally starts there, but he's in the hospital watching the game due to surgery a couple of days ago on his back. Just an out and up move, and Rideau gets burned. If this ball is thrown out a little bit farther, Mitchell is in the end zone because he's five yards behind the defensive back. Man to man coverage. This is something I don't think that uh, USC can do today against UCLA. Too much talent in Mitchell and Danny Farmer. 37 yards on the play to the Trojan 20 yard line. USC leads it. Three to one. This is a straight shot up the middle by Deshaun Foster. He is in push back. The Trojan comes out with the ball and is headed for the end zone. And the race is on. It is Aaron Williams. And chasing him is Ryan McCann. And apparently from all signs, the play was never blown dead. No, Shamsuddin Abdul Shahid came out of the pile with the ball. Number 52 for the Trojans. Now there's some question as to whether he stepped out of bounds. He just ripped it out of his hands and took it down the sidelines. It was ruled dead. The spot of the line judge. Oh, it was ruled dead, but I don't think anybody heard a whistle. We certainly didn't up here. Paul Hackett certainly did on the sidelines. Take a look at it. Foster has the ball. Hits the line. Is stopped by Marcus Steele. His forward progress stopped right there. 52 is Abdul Shahid. He rips the ball loose. But those type of plays are what make great rivalries right there. Controversy. <laughs> yes. With it four minutes to go in the first quarter. So mark the ball of the 19 yard line second down. Lifting his butt up. Well, they're going to check it out, see if we can hear a whistle being blown here. There it is. That, that is a quick whistle. That's unbelievable. He wasn't even being pushed backwards. Sideways maybe, but never backwards. I think the uh, Trojans got burned there. McCann, three-step drop. Little fade in the corner. It is. It'll be incomplete. Came down out of bounds. Going to Danny Farmer. That really has a nice touch on the ball, doesn't he? He really does it, and he throws the left-handed pass that Farmer likes, especially when Farmer's on the left side of the formation, because the ball will fade away from the defensive back. Farmer with a great catch and misses getting that foot in by about two inches. That's part of the game plan. They'll, they will go back to that play many times today. McCann has completed four of five for 65 yards. The throw again. Stands in. Tipped. Intercepted. USC has the ball. Zeke Moreno has the interception. And the first turnover of the ball game. Zeke Moreno with his third interception of the season. And he does a great job in this zone defense. Watch him get back here, settle, look at the quarterback. The protection is outstanding for McCann. But watch Moreno, checks the receiver, knows he's coming from his right side. And look at that athletic ability. Not quite sure where Ryan McCann was throwing that ball. No Bruin in that picture. Moreno, who made the interception, a junior from Chula Vista. He has scored a couple of touchdowns this year. Trojans retaining their 3 0 lead as they take over again deep in their own territory. Second time on offense, they come out for him. And the pass is complete to Woodrow Hayes, and he is stopped, uh, stopped by Strakula. Seven yards from the eight to the fifteen. Second and three. 
Sultan McCullough, the fastest man on the squad, 10-17 in the 100 meters. He has the ball, has the first down, almost a step away from breaking clean. Comes down around the 21 of the 22-yard line where Julius Williams trips him up. Julius Williams, number 29 for the Bruins. This is his first start. He's a sophomore, and he's starting, of course, in replace of LaBelle Houston, who's out with that concussion. Trojan fans hold their breath every time the ball goes to McCullough. They know about that speed. They just want to see it. It's not broken loose yet. Three wide receivers. We step right. Big fumble. Ball loose. Bruins have it. UCLA comes up with it. They're going to rule it down at the 31 yard line, but UCLA is going to have the football. It is Julius Williams who makes the play for the Bruins. Number 29. He's fifth the ball. And Ryan Rock recovered it. Well, Sourd had the ball kind of out in front. Rock with the right hand swiped it away. And here comes Williams who. Uh, Williams had the ball. Right. He taking the place of LaBelle Houston, as you mentioned, Charlie. Big turnover. Back to back turnovers. The Trojans get the interception, and then R.J. Sourd does not secure the pass, thinking more about his moves and trying to get down the sidelines. Big play for senior Ryan Rock. And the first series that uh, R.J. Sauer's been in the ballgame. Eight yards on the completion for R.J. Sauer. The ball just outside the 30-yard line. Trojans lead it 3 nothing. Play action play. Here comes pressure downfield. Tipped and intercepted, and USC has the ball. David Gibson, the senior from Mission Viejo, has the interception. So turnabout is fair play, and SC now has the ball. We'll step aside. We'll be back in just a moment. Five plays. On this one, Ryan McCann has got what he wants. This is Mike Simon down the sidelines. Guarded by Corey Dickerson, a defensive end. McCann doesn't read this mismatch here. Goes down the fear field where Ojalete and two other Trojans are for the interception. And the Trojans stay on the ground once again with Chad Morton. Abdul Aziz with the stop for the UCLA Bruin. The Trojans be very careful here deep in their own territory. They're leading in the ballgame 3-0, moving on the two-minute mark. Time remaining in the first quarter. Charlie McCann started rough last week against uh, the University of Washington when he replaced Corey Paws, but now he's thrown two interceptions. And three turnovers in the last six plays. And it is incomplete. Abdul Aziz knocked it away. Next Friday at 8 a.m. Pacific, that's 8 in the morning, ABC Sports kicks off Thanksgiving weekend, a college football doubleheader. Quarterback Major Applewhite in the number six Texas Longhorn battling for a BCS berth. They take on longtime rival Texas A&M. Then at 11.30 in the morning Pacific, Larry Crouch at number four Nebraska. They look to keep their national championship hopes alive as they play the Colorado Buffaloes. That's next Friday on ABC Sports, home of the Bowl Championship Series. Third down and eight. On the draw, here is Morton, and he breaks loose. He's out to the 20-yard line, needs a block, and will take the angle and go out of bounds. So again, the Trojans coming up with a big play on third down and long. And they have been doing this time and time again here in the first quarter. And it's a simple draw play right up the middle. Mac McShane is the center in for Eric Denman. Do a nice job on that twist play there. True freshman Marcus Reese misses a tackle. And a gain of 27 yards. Morton now in 10 carries has already rushed for 61 yards in the ballgame. Well on his way to his thousand yard season. 
And now going deep and pinned against the sideline, it is incomplete. Excellent coverage by the secondary of UCLA, and that was Ricky Manning Jr., who uh, had a birthday on Thursday, and he was 19 years old. Well, he's got a big advantage over the guy he's covering because Kareem Kelly's only 18 <laughs> years old. A couple of true freshmen. And you got to give the, the first battle to Ricky Manning there. Took a good angle and uh, kept Kelly from using that extra gear to accelerate to the ball. Meanwhile, Pete Holland, the senior defensive tackle, has taken himself out for the Bruins. It is second down and 10. Good for the Bruins, though. They get back number 97, Ken Coker. Bobby Douglas throws incomplete. Windrell Hayes should have had it, and he knows it. He was upset at himself. But you see what USC is trying to do. They're trying to throw these short hitch patterns to uh, get the secondary of the Bruins to react, and then they'll come back with a hitch and go to try and get them down the field deep. One thing that uh, Hugh Jackson wants to do is uh, put pressure on this secondary. They think that they can use their wide receivers to their advantage. Pete Holland now back in the ball game for UCLA. Jabari Jackson is the tailback in this set. He's in the block, pressure from the outside. Fox is in trouble. And he is sacked for the loss. Brought down by Santi Hall. That is Hall's fourth sack of the year. Last week against Washington, Ricky Manning had seven tackles, two tackles for loss, and one sack. And today, he, excuse me, there he is right there. He's going to get this pass pressure here. Coming on the blitz. Gets a, the speed is too much for McCaffrey. That forces Fox up into the pocket where the big guys are. McGillivray will kick it away. Ricky Manning Jr. is the return man. He has it at the 24-yard line of the Bruins. Slips one tackle, slips two, slips another. Has an opening, needs to block, has the block. Now he needs the speed. A great return inside the 35-yard line. The key block, Abdulaziz. He needed it to spring him loose right at the end, and he got it. And John Morgan of the Trojans with the saving tackle. Charlie, they always tell the return man to make the first guy miss. Okay, so Ricky Manning, what does he do? He makes the first guy miss, the second, the third, four, five, six right there, seven, and now it gets the block right there from Abdul Aziz. But you know, if Manning hadn't been involved in all those other plays in that last defensive series, he might have had the burst and the speed to go all the way. What a series for Ricky Manning. A 49-yard kick, a 43-yard return. At the SC 33 yard line, Bruins have a first down. They trail 3 0 in the waning moments of the first quarter. Here's Foster. And he is brought down by Marcus Steele. Steele has been playing all year long. He's number 55 with a bad shoulder and is scheduled for surgery as soon as the season is over after next week's ballgame. What a thing to look forward to, huh? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Let's keep on playing. <laughs> yeah. I want overtime. <laughs> That's I don't want to go. That's the and now we'll take the official countdown to the end of the first quarter. That's SC first leads it at the end of one by a score of three to nothing. ABC Sports presentation of college football will return after this message and a word from our ABC station. Start of the second period here at the Los Angeles Coliseum Senior Day. We uh, track another couple. Kenny Farmer having his great uh, senior season, not as great as he would like to have been, but he is in the lineup and he is dangerous. Deshaun Foster is the ball carrier, and he is stopped by Mac Childers as we go to John Saunders in New York. Charlie will keep it in the Pac-10, Washington State and Washington rivalry. Marcus Tuia Sosopo to Maurice Shaw takes it in from four yards out. It's 10 to nothing at that point. 10 to three is the score. Now Stanford, of course, trying to wrap up the Pac-10. They're tied with Cal. Charlie, back to you. And in case you joined us late, Stanford scored first. The ensuing kickoff, 100-yard kickoff return to tie it immediately at 7-7. But you expect that in the Cal-Stanford game. Here it is, three nothing FC in the. In the, through the first quarter, we're now in the opening moment of the second quarter. Foster to the right side. He is string him out and cut him down. Dan, in the first quarter, we had as many turnovers as we had points scored. 
sloppy play a couple of uh, bad decisions by the quarterback. Here's Dennis Gibson from David Gibson, uh, Gibson rather from modern day high school down the road in Santa Ana last year was a weak side linebacker. Now he's getting his nose dirty playing strong safety. Fourth down a field goal attempt from the 37 yard line an attempt of 47 yards by Chris Griffith. And he is hit from 48 yards away so this is right at the edge of his distance. It's a fake. Strickula the holder who comes up running with the ball and he only picks up about four he needed eight. And Zeke Moreno and Ifani Ojalete were not fooled on the Trojan side of the ball. So USC holds they take over on down. And meanwhile, Strakula comes up limping. Again, and Charlie, nine. this will be remembered as a first half of blown opportunities for UCLA. They waste the fine return by Manning and don't make it on the fake field goal. Thirteen twenty-six. Time remaining in the first half. The only scoring the field goal by David Newberry of USC from twenty-two yards away. And USC leading by a score of three to nothing. That's been the score since we had 6:06 time remaining in the first quarter. Now our athletic trivia question: Who caught the winning pass the last time USC beat UCLA? Well, the streak is eight, so you got to nine years ago would be the last time. I figured that out, Dan. Don't look at me. I know all the uh, fans from one school know very well. The other school wants to forget about. Want to forget? You're right. You're right. Troy Strykula injured on that last play with his shoe off, so Audi Attar is in for him in the secondary. SC now with five wide receivers in this opening set on first down. Box two steps, sets, throws very quickly to the far side. He goes to Steve Stevenson, the true freshman, and he has it. Ricky Manning Jr. had the coverage on him immediately. How dangerous is that to go with five wide and then go to the wide man? Well, you got to read that coverage, and the corner was uh, off about 10 yards. So, again, it was one of those five yard hitch patterns that turned into a seven to eight yard gain. Second down and two. Slot on the right side. And we have contact made before the ball is snapped. Usually, it's a false start that draws Sean Phillips into Prior to the snap, False start, offense, five yard penalty. Still second down. John Fox is doing a good job as a quarterback, but remember, he played a little linebacker. He still enjoys the physical side of the game. Well, physical game is the best game. I mean, you know, putting up a lot of points is great, but I mean, to smash mouth, you know, another team the whole game when you're all dirty and done, it's just, it's just the best feeling. Fox throwing pass is complete as he goes downfield to Windrell Hayes. And they will pick up the first down on the play. Also, when you ask him, how would you rather throw a touchdown pass or intercept one? And I loved it. His answer was, I'd like to throw the interception, have them come back. I make the tackle. <laughs> Meanwhile, knocking the man out of the game, causing the fumble, pick up the fumble, and run into the end zone. Now, that's true smash mouth quarterback, isn't it? Yeah, that was a little more information than I really was digging for, know. Charlie. But, you know, I think he'll get to like this feeling, though, of throwing completions better than, than uh, doing all that physical stuff. I tell you one thing, it pays a whole lot better. <laughs> and your body feels better the next day, too. Huh? All right, first down, SC, their own 47 yard line. Fox throw again. Goes to the sideline, and it is incomplete. Little high. Kareem Kelly, the intended receiver, Ryan Rock had the coverage on him. For those that are watching, you know, we have fans today that don't watch SC or UCLA throughout the season, but they come for the big game. And that is the background of the SC quarterback, John Fox, because four weeks ago or five weeks ago, he was a linebacker. A couple of years ago, he was a starting quarterback, lost the job, linebacker, special teams player, holder. And now he has to make that conversion to quarterback. It's really been a tough time. And he's played awfully well in this first half. Chad Morton brought down by Atar. 45-yard line of UCLA. 
Charlie, I asked a freshman wide receiver, Kareem Kelly, about a scouting report for John Fox. He says he's got a strong arm, moves around well in the pocket, and most importantly, he's the closest thing to Carson. Carson Palmer, that is, who in just three games this year before he broke his collarbone against the Ducks, completed 73% of his passes. So Fox gives the receivers the same feeling as Carson Palmer did. Eric Dimon, the center for the Trojans, returned at the start of this drive. Third down and two. Quarterback draw, a straight draw, and it'll be close. A call play with no running backs and four wide receivers. Tony White with the tackle for the Bruins. I really like that call, Charlie, because it, at six foot four, 220 pounds, and the uh, mentality of a linebacker, you know Fox is going to struggle and pull guys and fight for that yardage. This is going to be real close. And SC has been very successful on third down conversions thus far in the ballgame. Particularly their opening drive, they converted four in a row. About four inches shy. So they've converted five of eight third down opportunities. Do they go for it at four? Absolutely. They're bringing the big guy in, Mailo, as the fullback, number 75. But you know, when it's just an inch or so to go, I would much rather just give the ball and put it in the quarterback's hands and let him go behind his center and guards and push that pile forward. Remember, the quarterback is about a yard where his feet are behind the center where he uh, where the ball is delivered so he's the closest to getting the first down they call this the tank offense Mailo normally a left guard there's the tank right there yes he is and remember he only needed four inches for the first down and he got that Ryan needs making this stop meanwhile Matt McShane, the senior from Oakland, is back in at center. Flag is down. And some uh, pushing and shoving at the bottom of the pile, Charlie. And that flag came out after the play was dead, and the Bru Bruins are pointing at the Trojans. So here you get a first down, and now do you get a personal foul? You do, then it'll be first and 25 as a dead ball foul. Here's the call from Jim Springer. After the play, dead ball, personal foul, offense. 15 yard penalty, first down. Very costly. Here's the tank, Faasea Mailo. He clears the path right there with a beautiful block. And then at the bottom of the pile, something going on there between Perhaps Chad Morton and Mailos keep pushing there. It is against the Tro Trojans, so an another penalty, something that has just been a uh, real thorn in their side all year long. Five already today. That one there may be the most costly. So the ball goes back to the SC 43 yard line at first and 25. the ball carrier stop the play Paul Hackett told us he doesn't mind what he calls combat fouls those are when during prior to action. the snap false start offense five yard penalty still first down but that personal foul may have been on my elo well, let's check him out here he continues to push on Kenyon Coleman after the play it has been stopped there let's see what he does Continuing to push, Kenyon pull, pushes him away. I think it was that little short right jab there to the ribs that was seen by the officials. They marked it first down and 15. They marked the penalty foul off, but they marked it. It was first down and 10. It's in that line, first down and 15. And here's Morton's hits for the sideline and out of bounds, and hit way out of bounds. Now that should draw a flag. He was a good three or four steps out of bounds, Dan. Ryan Neese was behind him. First down, Roger. A gain of 21 yards. 
been the best part of the uh, Trojan offense today is giving the ball to number seven breaks a tackle there and now rock pushes him out of bounds and Nice gets an in inadvertent shove though but a shove nonetheless. nonetheless. Meanwhile a first down at the UCLA 41 yard line first and 10 more to the left side. Cuts back inside the 40 to about the 37 yard line. Robert Thomas with the tackle. Charlie with that carry uh, two carries to go for Chad Morton he's now over a thousand yards rushing on the season. He's at a thousand and ten and it's just the first half so talk about a guy that's backing up his words remember he guaranteed a victory. Well he's putting out that effort. Second down and six SC leading in the ball game by a score of three to nothing. A 22 yard field goal of David Newberry. 9.45 and counting time remaining in the first half. Fox throws. Nice touchdown to Sada. Has a man. Could not, could not hold on to it. Julius Williams dropped over, maybe to get a hand on it. Kareem Kelly, the intended receiver. This is a zone pass defense for UCLA. Watch on the outside. Manning lets the receiver go down the sidelines because he knows he has help deep. Nice job by Julius Williams, just barely getting a finger on that ball. Ball is kind of being thrown like a linebacker there almost end over end from John Fox a little bit better pass and and uh, Kelly would have had a chance to run underneath it and get in the end zone. Meanwhile the Trojans face another third down here flag. Prior to the snap dead ball false start. Offense. How many false starts have we had Kennedy, on both sides? Still third down. Way, way too many. <laughs> Our Affleck trivia question. Who caught the winning touchdown pass the last time USC beat UCLA? And the answer is Johnny Morton, November 17, 1990. He is the older brother of Chad Morton, the starting tailback for USC, who is as Dan mentioned a moment ago, he's just gone over a thousand yards rushing for the season. There's Chad, and he's also the man who guaranteed the victory at Media Day back in August. Paul Hackett said his head coach, I like that. I want him to think that way. His pressure on Fox being pulled down. He throws it away. He's going to get away with this one. Maybe there was somebody in the neighborhood. Kenyon Coleman got to him. Nice play by the junior from Out the Loma. Coleman looking for his uh, fourth and a half sack. Here he is right here with a great swim move there. I'm not sure this is an intentional grounding but if you look at where Jim Springer is he's out of position to make that call. Here's the kick. And it's going to carry into the end zone for the touchback and will bring it out to the 20 yard line. Mike McGillivray, the putter for USC. SC leads 3 0. Introducing ESPN Extra, the brand new channel for sports fans who can't get enough. On ESPN Extra, you get more of the sports you love, like international soccer from countries around the world, plus the UEFA Champions League, international auto racing, fitness, and outdoor programming. Plus, there's EXPN, which offers exciting extreme sports programming, all on pay-per-view around the clock all week long. Watch ESPN Now or your program guide to see what's on, then order exactly like you would for a pay-per-view movie. ESPN Extra, you can't do better than that. Tim O'Hara is about to have a close encounter. Reading. With a very distant relative. He's a Martian. Mark Martin? Mark? Yes. Yep, correct. Martin. Uncle oh, Mark. Now, <laughs> the question isn't when will alien life arrive? Martin! It's when will it leave? Rise and shine! You've been asleep for 30 seconds. Wow! I really was tired. Uh, Disney's My Favorite Martian, Ready to you.
SC leading UCLA by a score of three to nothing. About nine and a half left to go in the first half. We talked about that game the last time that USC won before the streak of eight began. This is Todd Marinovich throwing. He goes deep to Johnny Morton and a great catch in the end zone as SC won it 45 to 42. And Johnny, of course, the older brother of Chad. And, uh, Chad, the man who makes guarantees. This pass under pressure is complete, making a nice play and popping loose is Darrell Price, the fullback, out to the 50-yard line. Price, the senior, finally stopped by Darrell Rideau. Charlie, it's only his fifth catch of the year, but it was good for 31 yards. He had a 34-yarder earlier in the year. Here he is right here, sneaking out of the backfield. Watch the patience by McCann under pressure there. And now Price playing in his last game as a Bruin breaks three tackles there and gets all the way past midfield. Meanwhile, Ennis Davis, the right tackle for the Trojan, is shaking him on the play, and he has gone to the sideline. And here's Deshaun Foster for a couple of steps. Now for an update on Stanford and Cal, let's go to John Saunders in New York. Well, Charlie, for Cal, it's the Delta O'Neill Show. He had that 100-yard kickoff return for a touchdown. This one is 58 yards on a punt return. And yes, for his second touchdown of the day, and he is single-handedly keeping this game close, 14-13. The extra point was blocked in this one. Washington State and Washington right now in their battle, and Washington grabbed an early lead. And again, to update, if Stanford wins, they're in the Rose Bowl. And if Stanford loses, it changes uh, changes everything. Ready Mitchell the second on the receiving end, right near the first down marker. Daryl Rideau with the tackle for USC. We want to take a measurement here. Yeah, you know what? The, the Bruins love this at putting Farmer and Mitchell on the same side of the field. Daryl Rideau is eight yards off Mitchell when he catches that ball. You don't think he's worried about getting beat deep again? Mitchell went by him in the first quarter for a big play. And what did Chris Richard say about Mitchell's pattern? He said they were crafty, crafty pattern. Gets the first down. The on ball the, at the 39 yard line. Charlie on the other side is uh, Chris Richard, who has been in the end zone a couple of times this year with interceptions, leads the Trojans with five, but you notice the Bruins are throwing away from number 42. Matt Stanley is now in the offensive set for the Bruins. Here comes pressure in a sack. Matt Childers gets his fourth sack of the year. The junior from Castro Valley. He blew by everybody, Dan. You know, this is another case where the, the uh, Bruins are not taking advantage of their field position. The last three possessions have led to zero points because they've thrown two interceptions and they've uh, they ended the last series on down. So, Charlie, uh, they've reached the USC 30 yard line three times and now they're going backwards on this drive. Back to the far side after rolling left comes back right to Deshaun Foster. And that one doesn't work. Darrell Rideau again with the tackle. Let's go down to Todd Harris. Thank you, Charlie. I'm joined by the parents of Chris Richard, number 42, Ken and Patricia Richard. So far, looks like they're staying away from your son. Yeah, they are. And uh, lately, that's been happening a lot. And he's really getting frustrated about that. You got to be pleased with him, but folks, I got to tell you, this is a house divided. Mrs. Richard is a former Bruin fan. How did they convert you? Um, well, well, first time Chris walked out on the field of this game, I think I got a little converted. But we'll find out at the end. Best of luck to you. Thank you. Going deep, driving reception. Flag is down. The, catch, the pass is complete inside the nine yard line. Freddie Mitchell, the second, got it over Daryl Rideau. Had position on him to the inside, Dan, and it was a perfect pass from Ryan McCann. 
Pass interference, defense, penalty is declined. First down. Three catches now for 82 yards for number three. This ball is thrown out there. There's a little grab there by Rideau. Don't see that as uh, impeding the progress of Mitchell at all. But the catch is what counts here. Richard on the other side of the field has got Danny Farmer covered like a blanket. Good read by McCann. Eight yard line, first down goal to go. Second back through, swinging to the near side, losing yard, reversing, getting a semi block from his quarterback. Goes to the far side, scrambles, ends up making maybe a yard, possibly two on the play. Foster the ball carrier, and Chris Richard finally took him out of bounds. You know, Charlie, the field is 53 yards wide. <laughs> it wasn't wide enough, was it? No, if it was 50, if he were in Canada, he would have scored. That's right. And we'd be talking about a rouge now or something like that. This was a heck of a run because this is good job by the Trojans, uh, knowing that the sweep to the left side was coming. But this is just pure talent here by Foster. And a good job of Richard not letting him get that corner. And it was Matt Childers that turned him back to the far side. Here's Jermaine Lewis. Zeke Moreno, and again, the Bruins having all kinds of problems once they get in either into the red zone or close to the red zone. That's from the 20 yard line in with a scoring opportunity. And they played most of this ball game in the SC half of the field. They've had three great opportunities. This is their fourth one. They have got to come away with some points here. Third look, down, third down. Charlie, I would look for uh, Foster or Mitchell on this play. Jermaine Lewis is the tailback. McCann is going to run for it, cuts back, dives. He makes it. Ryan McCann scoring his first touchdown of the year. Oalete and Marcus Steele met him right at the goal line, but he had just enough momentum to take him in. Is the first touchdown of the ball game coming with 5:14 left to go in the first half. Chris Griffith to add the point after. It is good, and the Bruins go up seven to three. 80-yard drive in nine plays to just over four minutes as McCann scores from six yards out. Charlie had no choice but to run this ball. The pressure right up the middle. Just total desire here. Sees the goal line and sells out. Bring the action home with ESPN Full Court, the ultimate college basketball package no die-hard hoops fan can live without. With over 450 college basketball games, you'll get to watch your favorite teams and conferences no matter where you live. ESPN Full Court, only on pay-per-view. It's maximum college basketball. To order, call your cable company, DirecTV, or Dish Network. The number one action hit of the year is about to take over your TV. The Matrix on movie pay-per-view. Keanu Reeves, Lawrence Fishburne, in the movie where reality isn't what it seems. Welcome to the desert of the real. What is happening to me? Unbelievable, isn't it? The Matrix, featuring the hit soundtrack. Catch the phenomenon on movie pay-per-view. All the hits at your fingertips.
Ryan McCann scoring from six yards out. UCLA leading for the first time in the ball game, 7-3. Here is the kick, and it will go out of bounds. ABC Sports presentation of college football is brought to you by the new Impala by Chevrolet. Let's go for a ride. By Affleck, without it, no insurance is complete. By Valvoline, you can always tell the guys that use Valvoline. And by Russell Athletic, made for the long run. The out-of-bounds kick, the ball is placed on the 35-yard line, which is 30 yards from the spot of the kick. And USC trailing for the first time in the ball game will have a first down. And five minutes and 11 seconds left in the first half to try to change. That last drive for UCLA was all Ryan McCann. He got that screen pass to uh, Darrell Price, got him going, hit four for four. And you know what? Danny Farmer has yet to catch a ball today. That is amazing. Suleiman McCullough. He has the speed. He can outrun them all. And he does. And he's got it. Dives into the end zone. They're going to say he was out of bounds. They're going to rule him out of bounds at around the 17 or 18 yard line. <laughs> Meanwhile, the celebration was continuing. Woo. This is what Trojan fans have been waiting for to see this world class speed. Good move there, and now that's just pure speed as he runs away from Williams. And we'll check it out and see if he steps out. Good call by the official, and a good job by McCullough getting back in bounds in case the official didn't see it. And it was Ryan Rock who gave him the pressure that took him to that step out of bounds at the 17 yard line. 48 yards on the play, and the first down at the Bruins 17. Do we have another false start? I think so. Is anybody keeping tabs of these? Oh, absolutely. We Mark Amento has got it. Five there. false starts. On SC? Prior to the snap, false start, offense. Five-yard penalty, first down. How many on UCLA? It's more excusable for UCLA than for USC. I mean, Nine John, total, though. John Fox is a... Uh, Fifth year senior. And but he's his, a linebacker. Well, his cadence say uh, he must be calling the cadence <laughs> like a linebacker. Because he's getting his own guys to jump. First down, 15. Box to throw, deep over the middle, caught touchdown. Kareem Kelly, his third touchdown of the year. And he beat Ryan Ron. Trojans come right back. Took him 20 seconds on the game clock. And that was a thing of beauty. He has drawn comparisons to another great Trojan wide receiver, Lynn Swan, and that was very Swan-ish. Man, that was pretty. David Newberry will attempt the point after. It is good. UCLA's lead lasted 20 seconds. Trojans are back in front by three by a score of 10 to seven. Take a look at this catch on the post pattern for Kareem Kelly. Gets inside the defensive back. Good throwing lane for Fox. Look at the hands. That looks like old number 22 for the Trojans. John Fox celebrates his second touchdown pass of the year. Pretty good throw for an old linebacker. And what did Kelly tell us? I want to play with emotion, but not with anger. And he has been playing with emotion. Very much under control in his mind and especially in his body. You know, for a moment, let's go back to that 48-yard run by McCullough that set it all up. That is the longest rushing play of the season by the Trojan. And you know who had the uh, longest previous to that? Yep. That old linebacker, John Fox, <laughs> last week against the Cougars up there at Pullman. He does it all, doesn't he? It certainly does. Jermaine Lewis and Ryan Rock are the deep back. will be down in the end zone. And we'll bring it out to the 20-yard line. Next Saturday, 
Interstate rivals go head to head on ABC. Running back Trunk Candidate and the Wildcats take on the Sun Devils. It's a packed in shootout. Arizona at Arizona State and next Saturday at 10 in the morning Pacific time on ABC Sports, home of the Bowl Championship Series. Bruins now from their own 20 yard line. Sun is finally beginning to break through a little play action fake. Rolls left, left hand pass are complete and out of bounds. Near the 30 yard line. Rudeau had the coverage on Freddie Mitchell the second. Mitchell's from Lakeland, Florida. He's a sophomore. Ryan McCann's got a hot hand. He's in his last five in a row. And uh, yet to get one to Danny Farmer. You know that's going to change at some point. This is what Danny Farmer said about him. Good leader, bigger, more mobile, so that means I can see him. And he throws a catchable ball. He throws a catchable ball with the left hand a lot like Kate McNown. UCLA takes the timeout. That's their first timeout on the ball game. They have two left. SC will, of course, have three left. With 4.42 left in the first half, and we'll be back in just a moment after this message from the NCAA. Trojans on top by three and uh, Danny Farmer told me the other day just exactly what is a catchable ball. Something that spirals something that uh, has a little zip on it but is also soft enough to, uh, to it's it's a nice feeling for the hands and uh, he gets the ball there in a hurry and it's also uh, something that, that's that's nice to catch and uh, he, he, try, he puts it there every time I think it's a uh, it's just a great quality that he has. Still looking for a catchable ball to be thrown to his, uh, to him, but uh, not going to get this next one. He's on the sidelines right now. Freddie Mitchell taking up the slack, though, having a big first half. Second down. Just enough. For the first down, this is Charlie Jones along with Dan Fouts. This is the Coliseum in Los Angeles. And this is the city championship, the Crosstown rivalry, one of the big games of this weekend, of this Saturday in college football, the type of game that sets the seed that makes college football so special. For some 92,000 fans here, SC got out in front for the field goal by the score of three to nothing. And then UCLA put together an 80 yard drive in nine plays. Ryan McCann, the quarterback, going in from six yards out. And then, SC returned the favor, scoring uh, from 65 yards away in two plays to go back up by a score of 10 7. UCLA goes against drop. Freddie Mitchell drops the ball. Ryan McCann put it right in his hand. He had a step on uh, Daryl Rudeau. But boy, that was a catchable ball. No question about this. And uh, Freddie Mitchell will be the first to admit that he dropped a touchdown pass. Ohalete has bracket coverage. Rideau on the outside, but uh, Ohalete does not get back far enough. Doesn't really matter, though, because Freddie just brings his hands in too soon. And the quarterback, natural reaction of disbelief. Ryan McCann has completed 9 of 13 for 152 yards, and he served up two interceptions. He drills this one. It's going to be incomplete. And it was Freddie Mitchell again. And again, Freddie Mitchell dropped the pass. Came in a little bit low. Wasn't a real tight spiral, but uh, I think on that play, Charlie, that Mitchell realized that he was short of the first down yardage. He stops too soon. Ball comes in low, and it goes right through his hands. You might want to go take those gloves off. Now, you're the quarterback. Do you come back to him again? Not on this play, I don't. Okay. I'm going to find somebody who'll catch the ball. 
You're a tough man, Faust. <laughs> tough world. The world. From the shotgun, pressure from behind and a sack. Lonnie Ford has his second sack of the ball game, his fifth of the year. The offensive line of the Bruins had been doing a good job up until that play, but again, Lonnie Ford beats Michael Webb. Webb's making his first start at right tackle. So fourth down, Nate Vixie will be kicking, and the true freshman, Kareem Kelly, is the return man. And he has speed 10 28 in the 100 meters. Good kick, turns over. Kelly has it, comes to the near side. Picks up a block, comes inside, tripped up. 35 yard line flag is down. Jermaine Lewis got him. Uh, there was a, a block in the back, as there is so many times on kick cover. Jermaine Lewis with the tackle. We have three minutes and 17 seconds. That is the time remaining in the second quarter. During the return, illegal block in the back. 10 yard penalty from the spot of the foul. First down. SC leading by 3-10-7. Next Saturday, Spain's El Nino. Boy, is he fun to watch. Sergey Garcia. He'll be competing in his first skins game. He joins Fred Couples, Mark O'Meara, and David Duval in one of America's favorite Thanksgiving traditions. The skins game, always fun to watch. It's a feast. I love this line, Dan. It's a feast on the green for the green. <laughs> Next Saturday, starting 1.30 Pacific on ABC Sports. Did you know I like the people that write those. Sergio Garcia is a true freshman, too. Much, <laughs> much too young to be playing in a skins game. And I'm going to talk to his parents too, about that. Much too wealthy. <laughs> I think they ought to put up their own dough. That's right. That'd like, make it interesting. Like we have to. <laughs> That's right. Keith Jackson made us do that, didn't he? All right, SC. Now they start from their own 23-yard line. Line. And it's Chad Morton again. Robert Thomas making the stop. You mentioned earlier that that Chad Morton last week you know, they rotated the backs a little bit more than they have here, but was well rested in the second half. He's gained an awful lot of yardage in the first half. Now, is he going to be rested enough in the second half, or should he get a little breather? In? You know, I think a, a guy that has a motor like Chad Morton uh, probably never gets tired, and. Uh, he is off to that great start here in the first half, right at 100 yards rushing already. But uh, look for him to keep going until the very last gun. And he keeps on going, tripped up this time by Pete Holland. SC has all three of their timeouts remaining. You know the Bruins know that they're going to be playing that uh, not necessarily a prevent defense but they will be playing loose on these receivers. The memory of Kareem Kelly's touchdown catch against the man to man coverage still on that man's mind Bob Toledo third down and three. Here comes the blitz the handoff. Coming inside, it is Jabari Jackson, the ball carrier. Ryan Neese with the tackle, and it's just enough to pick up the first down. And that was Robert Thomas, the middle linebacker, who came by on the blitz and just missed John Fox as he made the handoff. Jabari Jackson is another senior. It's Robert Thomas. Just missed timing that uh, blitz. He was close on it, wasn't he? Might have made had a real big collision in the backfield. 35 yard line, first down SC. And at 32 and counting. First down. This one is, oh, that's a terrible throw. Terrible throw. Got away with it. I guess Pat Swanson was the, the nearest eligible receiver. That's uh, certainly what John Fox is going to tell Paul Hackett. That's, uh, that was my tight end throw to a tight end. <laughs> Fox has played uh, a little bit of tight end as well. But you can't hit them all. That one uh, would like to forget. Give me the next play, coach. Let me move on. He was really upbeat when we talked to him yesterday. Wasn't he? He, like, he likes being the quarterback in this ballgame. He likes being a factor in it, that he can make things happen. His last shot at the Bruins. The streak is eight games in a row for UCLA. Here's Chad Martin bouncing to the outside. And then bounces into the uh, oh a little there's a little joy going on with the UCLA bench. 
Chad uh, doesn't realize he is outnumbered there about 108 to 3. The Goodyear Tire and Rubber Company has dispatched this Carson California base blimp Eagle. Ah, there's the Eagle. To provide these aerial pictures, Goodyear blimps have been appearing over sporting events since 1925. When I was driving up on the 405 the other morning, it was just sitting there so majestic in the morning. Have you ever had a ride on one? Yes, I have. And, it, and, and it, uh, it is a lot of fun because you really don't feel like you can hurt no, yourself. That's right. <laughs> and, it's, it's and, it, around. and it's so quiet. Morton goes up inside, comes outside, has the first down. Flag is down. He goes out of bounds at the 50-yard line. I want to sort out the flag. Charlie, the, the reason he got to bounce to the outside is because there was holding against USC. It appeared to be Dante Kendrick again, number 70. Holding. Offense, 10 yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Repeat third down. 10th penalty of the game for USC. Number 70 is right here at left guard. Dante Kendrick watches he reaches out and keeps Kenyon Coleman from making a play on Chad Morton. Made a nice tackle on him, didn't he? Playing like that, they might move into defense. That's right. Well, the ball goes back to the 34 yard line. Ten penalties, though, Charlie. That's their average, and they've already they've already matched it the first half. Little Hogan, you know that. Three, three wide receivers. Third down. McKenzie out to the 40-yard line. Julius Williams has a fumble recovery and one of the turnovers. There have been three in the ball game. Two interceptions by the Trojans and Williams fumble recovery for the Bruins. He makes the tackle, and we've got a timeout. And a very, very conservative. Conservative call by Paul Hackett on a third and 11 to go with a draw play. Just conceding you can't make it. You're going to play some special teams, which he thinks may be the key to this ball game. But Bruins will have one timeout with a minute to go when they get the ball. Hugh Jackson, offensive coordinator, mulling over that call. All by himself, all lonesome in blue. Or lonesome in Cardinal. All right, Dan, coming up on Valvoline Halftime 99, John Saunders and Terry Bowden with all the scores and highlights. And uh, that's going to be a good halftime. That'll be updating us on everything that's going on on so many of the great rivalries that are taking place today around the country. McGillivray will be kicking to Ricky Manning Jr. But he got a piece of it. Takes a good bounce for the Trojans and continues on its way. They got away with one. Audi Attar got in there and just got a fingernail on that ball. If he is three inches taller, that ball is snuffed right off the foot of McGillivray. Attar is, for the record, six feet even. Check him out here. Number two is Atar. He's going to lay out right here. The block by John Morgan is just enough to get that ball down the field. Bruins have the ball at their own 23 yard line with 54 seconds left in the first half. Flag is down, SC's offside. Sideline pass is incomplete. Freddie Mitchell falling out of bounds, was out of bounds. SC was offside. I believe it was Lonnie Ford. Charge was defending. Offside, defense, five yard penalty. Still first down. It'll be first down in five. 48 seconds time remaining first down. Charlie, when we talked to Paul Hackett about the penalties, uh, he said, you know, we had three against Arizona State and lost the game. We had 15 against Washington State and won the game. You go figure. Well, 11 yeah. already. And for 84 yards, while UCLA has had four for 30. So, uh, you know, this could be good for SC, <laughs> all these penalties. If you follow that logic. Pressure from the outside. McCann rolls free, and he's going to run for the sideline. Stops the clock, picks up some yardage. 
Down in front of the bench. Mark Castillo was chasing him. That was close to another penalty on SC. McCann looking around for a flag. They're going to mark it at the 34 yard line. And they mark it also for a first down. You notice they're moving the pocket now after three sacks in the first half of McCann. He runs away from Abdul Shahid. He's out of bounds there. Gets a little shove for Marcus Steele. That might have been called. From the shotgun. And we're going to stop it again. I cannot remember so many ball starts total in a ball game. Well, that's four now against UCLA. Prior to the snap, ball start, offense, five yard penalty. Still first down. Four against UCLA, five against USC. You know, Charlie, it's always better to have a false start before the play. If you have a false start after the play, it means you're late. First and 15. Means you didn't get there. <laughs> Now that's a quarterback's watch. You know, somebody would always say, what did he say? What did he say? Don't pay any attention to him. That's what... <laughs> All right, here's the shotgun on the set. Three wide receivers. A fourth goes out. McCann likes to run the ball. He found out he could do it. And he wants to hurry everybody up. Clock moving. The clock is stopped. They're going to go ahead and take their last time out. All right, let's take a look back. The 1992 game. This was John Barnes, the fourth string walk on quarterback, came off the bench and threw a 29 yard touchdown pass to J.J. Stokes. USC scores a touchdown in the closing minutes. This was before overtime. They go for the two point conversion and they miss. UCLA wins 38 37. Barnes throws for 385 yards and three touchdowns. One of those magical moments for a, a football player in college. It happens just every once in a while. You always remember. And this young man right here is hoping to recreate some of that magic. Ryan McCann also a fourth string quarterback. Update it. Not everybody that's watching today may know what happened last week. So update it. Well last week uh, McCann came off the bench when Corey Paws broke his collarbone against the Washington Huskies and uh, started 0 for 6 and then settled down and uh, the important thing that he did in the ball game is he didn't throw any interceptions something he has done twice today that just killed the Bruins when they had great field position and after over six he then hit 12 of his next 17 passes and that's good Ooh, big time 29 seconds left first half SC by three 10 seven three wide receiver shotgun formation. Ryan McCann, redshirt freshman. Here's the screen. It's a tackle. That's Deshaun Foster. Foster's out of bounds. That'll stop the clock. play Deshaun Foster. First man there was Marcus Steele of uh, the Trojans. But you talked about the fact that Steele's playing with a bad shoulder, and he's, he's looking at the surgeon's knife in a couple of weeks. If he has two good shoulders, he makes that tackle for a loss. His teammates th thought so much of him. Uh, but they named him game captain. It's quite an honor for a junior. Third down and eight. Three wide receivers again for the shotgun. Four-man rush by SC. Here's the draw. Deshaun Foster. On the 38-yard line. May not be able to get off another play. Now we have the clock stop. SC takes a timeout. Oh, the game of cat and mouse and timeouts continue. SC now has two timeouts remaining. UCLA is out of time. They got two timeouts remaining, but they only have 12 seconds on the clock. And when they get the ball after the uh, punt, there may not be any time at all to use those timeouts. Kareem Kelly is going to be the punt return man. Marcus Steele a little slow leaving the field. A trainer came out to help him. Here he goes off the far side. 
Nate Fixie is the punter for UCLA. He comes into the ball game with a 41.3 yard average. He's a true freshman from Anaheim. Zero. And with the punt, we come to the end of the first half. And at halftime, it is USC 10, UCLA 7. Stay tuned for Valvoline Halftime 99 with John Saunders and Terry Bowden. We'll return after these messages and a word from our ABC station. By three. We take a look at our Morgan Stanley Dean Witter halftime stats. The rushing yardage because of uh, Chad Morton with 111 yards rushing and you go right down to those penalties for SC. They've got to knock those off but that's right on their average and ironically UCLA averages five penalties a game as well but we got another half to play Charlie. SC won the toss they defer now Marcel Allman and Chad Morton are the deep backs on the return and here is Morton with a straight shot right up the middle across the 30 out to about the 32 yard line. Hello again, everybody. I'm Charlie Jones, along with Dan Fouts. And the first half was a bit of a mishmash of golden opportunities that got away and too many penalties. Well, for UCLA, they had three possessions inside the Trojan 30-yard line and didn't get any points out of it. And again, USC just continues to make silly mistakes with the penalties. Anything can happen in a ball game like this, but the one thing you don't want to have happen is to beat yourself. And that's what both teams have done here in the first half. All right, what do you predict for the second half? A lot more of the same, Charlie. <laughs> well, at least it'll stay close to the A big to the right. The pass is complete. First down for USC. And that's Malifo McKenzie on the receiving end of the John Fox pass. Now let's go down to Todd Harris. Todd? Thank you, Charlie. I talked to both coaches at halftime. Coach Toledo said he was happy with the way his team was playing. He knew it was going to be a defensive struggle, but he said they've got to find some way to get points on the board. That's why he went for the fake field goal. I said, can we expect some trick plays in the second half? He just smiled and said, good possibility. Coach Hackett says he's going to stick with his game plan. He knew he could run on him, but he's looking for a big special team play to turn this game. Back to you, Charlie. All right, thank you, Todd. 48-yard line. Trojans opening drive of the second half. Chad Morton getting the call, and he is stopped right at the line. Of Pete Holland was the first Bruin to get there. Dan, after a halftime of 20 minutes in college ball, how hard is it to get back in your rhythm when you come out of the locker room? Yeah, you know, Charlie, it is a long time, but uh, the, the big thing is in a game like this, uh, you can't wait to get back out on the field. I guarantee you, when these players got into the locker room, had a glass of water, maybe changed the T-shirt or two, they were breaking down the door to get back out here. The give us to the first back through. That is the fullback, Charlie Landrigan, and he is stopped by Rusty Williams. And that was not a very smooth exchange between the quarterback, John Fox, and uh, Malifo McKenzie, who was playing fullback on that play. They take a couple of shots on the ground. They don't go anywhere, and it'll be third down and ten. McCann faking the pitch and then giving the ball to the up back, rather Fox, and uh, almost missed a handoff. R.J. Soward is in the ball game, second appearance that he has made. He has had a one pass thrown to the first half, and he immediately fumbled it after he was hit. And this is Soward coming over across the middle and then out of bounds. He is a player that SC needs in the second half. If he can go, he's been bothered with a hamstring, did not practice throughout the week. Big energy guy, and the crowd kind of feeds off his energy. This is a smart play. Give him the ball in space and let him use that great speed. He gets to the outside and picks up the first down. Eric Whitfield bumps him out of bounds, spot the ball now at the 36 yard line as he picks up the first down. Fox wants to play in. He wants him to hurry up and get the play in. And he was short of running back, and he was waving for Chad Moore. They're going to have to burn a timeout. 
major mistake to have to burn a timeout in this kind of a ball game this early. Right. So we're going to step aside now. 13.06. A lot of time remaining. Third quarter. Jaguars on ESPN Sunday Night Football. I like playing in New Orleans, but it's hot down there. It's not the heat. It's the humidity. Exactly. Oh, boy, here we go. I can't take the humidity. I always get a bad case of the prickly heat. Could we get through one night without him mentioning his prickly heat? It's disgusting. It's the Saints against the Jaguars on ESPN Sunday Night Football. It all begins with NFL primetime at 730. I got a salve that works real good on the prickly heat. Don't encourage him. by three, 10 to seven over UCLA, opening moments of the second half. ABC Sports presentation of college football is brought to you by Chevrolet Trucks, the most dependable, longest lasting trucks on the road. By Burger King, have it your way. By National Car Rental, so what are you waiting for? Let's go. And by Pacific Life, annuities, insurance, investments, use the power of Pacific Life. Take a look at their quarterback comparison for both number fours today. You, you go down to those uh, two interceptions there and no touchdowns, but you got to give McCann credit for getting in from six yards out on a third down play. R.J. Soward in as a wide receiver to the far side. They give us a Chad Morton. Soward with a block on his man, cleared him to cut back inside. Meanwhile, somebody lost the helmet at about the 28-yard line. Eric Denman, the center, got his helmet ripped off. Robert Thomas making the tackle for UCLA. It'll go for four, so it's going to be second down and six. Looks like Ken Coker right here in the middle here just uh, takes his right hand and not only rips the helmet off, but punches him right in the face with a left jab. Man. Joy Stracula is back in the ballgame defensively for the Bruins, so that's good news for UCLA. Inside hand up to Morton, bounces back outside to the 30-yard line. Morton has real good strength. Did you see that time as Ken Coker reached out and tried to strip him of the ball? He was holding the ball real tight to his chest and didn't allow number 97 to pull it loose. Average yards per rush. UCLA 1.2, USC almost six and a half yards as an average. That's the difference in a, an established offensive line for USC and the problems that UCLA has had with their new offensive line. Showered is back in as a wide receiver at the top of your screen. A little fade pattern, leaping reception by Windrell Hayes. He makes the play. Julius Williams had the coverage, and he made it on Williams. The fifth-year senior was staring at a middle linebacker coming right down the gut. Watch Robert Thomas as he has a free run on John Fox. Fox knows he's going to get hit, fades away with the pass, and lets Hayes make the catch. This is an outstanding play by a quarterback, knowing the blitz is coming, but knowing downfield you've got the matchup you want. And Paul Hackett says knowing that John Fox can let his teammates make the big play. And he did right there. That's exactly what they're talking about. Chad Morton cuts back and tripped up. And it was Robert Thomas 
putting the pressure on a moment ago and now tripping up Chad Morton. And that was a great tackle by Robert Thomas. Had 11 last week against Washington, but this one here, this is what you call a touchdown saving tackle. He gets out here, and just as Morton is going to make a move to cut back inside, he cuts and cuts down the runner. Here's the tank offense. Mahi Lowe at 330 pounds is the lead blocker. Basically, he's the fullback, and we got flags fly. This is a huge penalty against SC. Another false start, and here they are at the one-yard line. Dead ball, false start, offense, five-yard penalty. Charlie, there's Still just no down. excuse. There's nothing a player can go over and tell Paul Hackett why he jumped off sides here. Just a little flinch, but you've got to have the poise. You have to have control here. Uh-oh. And one of our officials is down. He's got a bad left bad left knee. knee, yeah. Fred Gallagher, the line judge, and Harvey Jones, the side judge. Fred, a 25-year veteran. He's a fire department captain. Harvey, 26-year teacher. This is Fred Gallagher, the line judge. They have two Rose Bowl games and 20 bowl games between them. This is their last ball game. They are retiring. Fred may be retiring for the game zone. Oh, boy. That's really unfortunate. There's Harvey. He's staying out of the mix there, but... You know one thing Fred uh, looks like he's uh, probably got an old football injury there on that left knee and tweaked it just a little bit. Could be an old officiating injury also because they, they think of beating every once in a while when they get caught in the middle of the. I tell you what he looks like an old cowboy he's got a little <laughs> bit bow legged to those things. I hope he's all right. All right, while well, we have a moment next Friday at 8 a.m. Pacific, ABC Sports kicks off Thanksgiving weekend, a college football doubleheader. Quarterback Major Applewhite, boy, he has looked good. The number six Texas Longhorns, they're battling for a BCS berth. They take on uh, longtime rival Texas A&M. Then at 11.30 a.m. Pacific, Harry Crouch and number four Nebraska, they're looking for another national championship. They try to keep their hopes alive against Colorado. That is the 12th penalty against USC, and there's six full stop. Rock slips the tackle, and the second man gets it. Ryan Neese makes the tackle for UCLA. His dad, by the way, is Ronnie Lott. And when uh, Ronnie Lott was playing for USC in the secondary, his coach was Bob Toledo, now the head coach of UCLA. So he had a bit of a recruiting advantage there. Sorry, you look, notice in the backfield, there's no running backs in there, so the Bruins come on the blitz. First, Tony White, and then Ryan Neese. That's a good defensive audible, seeing that there was nobody to protect Fox, and they got him. Four wide receivers, now third down. Well, fake, there's the fade into the corner. And a leaping grab, no, incomplete. Green Kelly, the intended receiver, uh, intended receiver. Strakula going up with him. There's Joy, number 37. Joey sprained his uh, foot in the first half. Joy Strakula on the cover. Showing that uh, he's a gamer. At the big interception against Washington last week. Ball just goes right through the hands of Kareem Kelly. That might have been a touchdown. This one will be from the 19-yard line, good attempt for 29 yards. David Newberry, he is hit in the ball game from 22 yards away, and we got a flag before anything else. Surely not another false start. Yeah, and UCLA forced this one. They know that SC's a little jumpy. Fire to the snap, false start, offense, five-yard penalty. Number Still seven. Fourth down. <laughs> and if you go back just moments ago, SC had first and goal, or rather second and goal at the one yard line. One yard line. Then the penalty, then the sack, then the incomplete pass, and now another false start. 24 yard line, an attempt at 34 yards. It's gone. He pulls it, hooks it left, it is no good from 34 yards away. So a golden opportunity first of seven, and then of three has slipped away. 
The number one action hit of the year is about to take over your TV. The Matrix on movie pay-per-view. Keanu Reeves, Lawrence Fishburne. In the movie where reality isn't what it seems. Welcome to the desert of the real. What is happening to me? Unbelievable, isn't it? The Matrix, featuring the hit soundtrack. Catch the phenomenon on movie pay-per-view. All the hits at your fingertips. Football Classics, Wednesdays at 9, only on ESPN Classic. Are you old school? Time remaining, third quarter. SC still leading by three, and the, the game is just it's slipping away from both ball clubs. Charlie, we talked at halftime, and you asked me what did I expect in the second half. I said more of the same. You laughed. We've had penalties and blown opportunities. <laughs> had more of the same. You're right. UCLA now from their own 20-yard line, first down. anything on the ground that's Deshaun Foster carrying and Matt Childers with the tackle as we go to New York and John Saunders. Well Charlie Penn State trying to mount a comeback against Michigan State. Kevin Thompson has been buried throughout the game. There's a great pass here to Eddie Drummond for the touchdown and the Nittany Lions back within a couple of touchdowns 28-14. Penn State has been struggling over recent time. I'd say so. Whoa. Been in trouble with two Michigan teams, yeah. that's for sure. Second down and nine following the gain of one. He can't have pressure and he's going to go down. Ryan Nielsen is the man who gets him. That is his second sack of the year, sophomore from Simi Valley. Play started off poorly for McCann and the Bruins because he had trouble getting the snap from James Gezzi. Had to reach back for it. By that time, the timing is totally off. Still pretty good protection. He's got to realize, and he will once he gets more experience, that once the play starts that badly, just get rid of the ball. Don't take that sack. Back to the 13 yard line, so it's third down and 17. From the shotgun. Goes left by his time. Goes deep into triple coverage, and it is incomplete. Danny Farmer, the intended receiver, David Gibson and his friends, Chris Richard, there to break it up. Good pressure again by SC. They bring him down now four times in the ball game. Trying to throw the ball on the run, a little bit of pressure, poor decision again for McCann. As Gibson is all over that play. Morton and Kelly are both back as returns. Oh. Here's the kick by Fixie. Here's Kareem Kelly. He is in all kinds of trouble at the 40 yard line. Now let's take a look back. Let's go to the year 1967. This was originally a pass play, an audible at the line of scrimmage, and O.J. Simpson and what's this? He goes 64 yards. This is one of the, the great touchdown scoring plays in the history of this rivalry. The Trojans go to the Rose Bowl, and they go on to win the national championship. Consolation for UCLA quarterback Gary Beban won the Heisman Trophy. Charlie, credit to Toby Page, the USC quarterback, that changed that 
pass play and put the ball in the Juice's hands. That was called, the play was called by Craig Furtick, who was the quarterback coach at the time. He said after that, I'll call all the plays. <laughs> <laughs> Play action fake going deep as a man if he hits him overthrows him. Overthrowing Kareem Kelly. Julius Williams had the coverage. Now why did we show you that? Why did we take a look back? Well, here's why. Our fan poll selected the all-time best USC UCLA game, and guess what? It was the SC 21-20 victory, 1967. 32% chose that one. 1990 was the USC 21%. 20% UCLA and Dan, you were right, four and six percent yeah. for those two. You, you gotta get rid of the ties. Get Somebody's the ties. gotta win. Get rid of the ties. That's right. <laughs> and almost 50,000 votes were cast today. So we thank you for participating. Zulton McCullough, the ball carrier for SC. He's going to have maybe a yard, and that will be the extent of it. And the proceeds from that poll go to uh, covering your golfing debts. Huh? That's right. <laughs> They're going to go to pay my instructor because he needs lots of help. <laughs> Ten thousand dollars worth of lessons, then give it up, Charlie. You'll That's be right. fine. Where's Butch Harmon when somebody really needs it? Hey, let's go. Ball now at the let's SC 42 go. yard line. Hey, let's go. Let's go. Box back to throw. Has pressure from the backside. Gets it away. Almost intercepted. Abdul Aziz was putting the pressure on. Pat Swanson, the intended receiver. This is Charlie Jones along with Dan Fouts. SC UCLA, the crosstown rivalry, the city championship. UCLA has the, the streak going. They've won the last eight games, but right now they are trailing USC by three, 10 to seven. And we have 6.52 left to go. We're in the third quarter as Mike Montgomery <laughs> kicks it away to Ricky Manning Jr. And he has it at the 18-yard flag is down to the 20. Nice stutter step. Shakes another tackle. Good return. There was a flag back at the 41-yard line that we'll have to sort out. Charlie, they're going to have to sort out a couple of penalties. We've got one down at the 20-yard line, so one may be against SC and one may be against UCLA. Preliminary signal is that one may be a clip. This is the 69th meeting between these two schools. The first eight, SC won five and three were tied. The last eight, you can paint them, UCLA blue. The Bruins with that, the streak, eight in a row. And as you said at the beginning, Dan, equal pressure to keep the streak going or to stop the streak. Charlie, the big thing about the, the pressure is that to each player will remember uh, each block, each tackle, each run, each ca catch. Now, you played in games like this when you were a senior at Oregon against well, Oregon State. What it, was that like? Well, we were uh, on the tail end of an eight-game losing streak as well. And uh, we scored the very first play of the game against the Beavers back in 72 and went on to beat them 30 to 3. But there are three penalties on the play. Holding at the line of scrimmage on the receiving team. Face mask, 15 yards on the kicking team during the return. An illegal block in the back on the receiving team during the return. All penalties cancel. We play the down. All right, go ahead. That makes perfect sense to me. <laughs> me too. Uh, but, but anyway, the, the big thing was is that, you know, in, in this case, you've got guys from the same city. And in my case, it was from the same state. And, and you just know the rest of your life, you're going to be seeing the same people win or lose. And it, it's a whole lot better, obviously, to get that monkey off your back. And eight games, that is a lot. And also, you were in the ball game with still two minutes to go in the game, and you were way out in front? We were ahead 30 to 3 on the six yard line, going in for more, Charlie. <laughs> Let him go. That's what it's all about. All right, here's the kick again. Ricky Manning Jr. to the 20. Down around the 23 of the 24 yard line. And you know, Charlie, Bob Toledo has his own 8 and 0 as the head coach, as an assistant for both sides.
NBC puts on its Sunday best with two great David Kelly dramas at 9, 8 central and all new Snoops. We are PIs, we are not cops. We do ugly work. Either you want to be here or not, but if you don't, get the hell out. Then, an explosive new practice. Eugene. Your ex-wife says she got up to take a shower. When she came out of the bathroom, this is what she found. You want to ask our son if he committed murder. It's an all-new Snoops, followed by an all-new practice. ABC Sunday, starting at 9, 8 central. It all began in a stadium. Then TV brought pro football into your home. But now it's a new era, and your TV just isn't big enough anymore. Log on to Enhanced TV, the most entertaining way to experience Monday night and Sunday night football. Get live up-to-the-minute stats as they happen. Play our exclusive live interactive game and trivia. Experience what other users are raving about. During the game, be part of the action. Go to ESPN.com or NFL.com and log on to Enhanced TV. C10, UCLA 7. Bruins have the ball. First down on their own 24 yard line with Darrell Price at fullback. Deshaun Foster is the tailback. A little play action fake and a swing pass into the left flat to Price, and it is incomplete. Uh, Abdul Malik was putting the pressure on the quarterback. Now let's check in and see what's going on in the Cal Stanford game. John? Well, Charlie Cal is trying to stay with Stanford, but Stanford getting ready to put her away. K. Seymour here. 94 yards no one even gets within four or five yards of them for the touchdown opening up the lead to 28 to 13 as Stanford looks to wrap up a trip to the Rose Bowl Charlie and again if uh, Stanford does go on to win it's automatically then go to the Rose Bowl and that'll be the first time in quite a long time here's Darrell Price rambles out across the 30 to about the 31 yard line where he's stopped by Aaron Williams now, what, what are the Rose Bowl scenarios? Well, we have that for you. If Stanford wins, they go. If Stanford loses and Washington wins, Washington goes. If Stanford and Washington both lose, then Oregon goes if they win. If Washington and Oregon lose, then Stanford goes. Okay. <laughs> well done, Charlie. Thank you. Thank you. Could have stopped after the first line, <laughs> it looks like. It looks that way. That's the only line I understand. On the 30-yard line. Flat drop. Flat drop by Danny Farmer. Kind of been that kind of season for Danny Farmer. He's been battling injuries. Has only 27 catches coming into the game and still only has 27 catches. This one, clearly, as you said, Charlie, was a flat out drop. Well thrown by McCann. Farmer turning his head, trying to get extra yards before the catch. He has 157 career receptions. Is that a case when you're trying to just do too much rather than just catch the ball? And no the question. Play? And he had the uh, necessary yardage for a first down without thinking about that he needed to get more. Nate Pixie kicks it away. Oh, good kick. Morton will back up. About 13 yards. Heads to the far side. And then just steps out. Too many, too many Bruins were there. And we were talking about Sanford. Next Saturday night in the primetime college football matchup. Don't miss it. Darius Jackson and the Notre Dame Fighting Irish. As they will look to finish the regular season on a high note, they go up against a very tough Stanford team. You will be there, Dan, along with Keith Jackson. That is Saturday night at 5 Pacific on ABC Sports, home of the Bowl Championship Series. And don't forget once again that Stanford can clinch the Rose Bowl berth if they win over Cal today. But a lot of weird things happen at the end of the Stanford Cal ball game, so don't count Cal out. Let's see here is Morton to the near side. Around the corner for about three. Speaking of the Rose Bowl, first time in 28 years. Thank you that Stanford has been there. 1971. 
And that, of course, was Jim Pluckett, Pluckett to Randy Bunch. Bataha, you're saying no. Don Bunce actually was the quarterback. Plunkett and Bataha got him to the Rose Bowl in 1971, the 1970 season. So uh, Bunce, and believe me, Charlie, I remember because they beat me, both Plunkett and Bunce the next year, uh, took it out on uh, the Oregon Ducks twice there, and they went on to win the Rose Bowl with uh, John Ralston. You could have said that a moment ago, and then I wouldn't have had the mess up. <laughs> Sorry. I didn't know. I to get it right. Oh, man. John Fox got away with one there. What in the world was he doing? Coming back and making a throw like that. That could be intercepted, cost you a quick touchdown, and all of a sudden you're giving the lead to the Bruins. It's almost as if uh, neither of these teams wants to win the game. Look at the pressure here, and then the decision by the former tight end, former linebacker. This is what he was thinking about was I know that Kareem Kelly's got to be open somewhere. Just couldn't get all the way out to the outside to him. Third down. Here's the screen. Pass is complete. It will come up way shy of the first down. Joe Hunter bringing down Jabari Jackson. That's a job I want someday. I want to be able to stand on the sidelines and, and have a towel and just wave it like crazy. I don't know, I don't know what else the guy's doing. But he's having a heck of a day with that towel. They say my arm is exhausted. I'm the official towel waver. He's looking looking a little winded right now. <laughs> Here's the kick. Richie Manning chases it back, lets it go. Going to be down around the 16 or 17 yard line. Our UCLA will take over with just a tick of the clock over four minutes of time remaining. In the third quarter here at the Coliseum as the once the sun started to break through and the clouds were going away, it becomes a very nice afternoon. Paul Hackett said in their Dell Game Solutions that the Trojans needed to limit their turnovers. Well, they've done a good job with that, but the penalties uh, are almost like turnovers, especially when you think back to the last time uh, SC was on the one yard line. They had a couple of penalties and came away with zero points. UCLA still trailing by three. FC leads it 10 7. And there's not anything there for Deshaun Foster. Foster last year scored four touchdowns in this ballgame, but this time he is stopped first by Ryan Nielsen, and second it was Lonnie Ford. But the, the offensive line is just getting beaten to the punch off the ball by this fine uh, defensive line for SC. Aaron Williams is, is playing again. He's healthy. You can see the job that uh, the tro Trojans are doing against the run. Remember, they came into the game as the number two uh, rushing defense in the Pac-10. And that was correct, that last graphic that you saw. The total rushing yards in the game for UCLA is 20 yards. And that's on 25 carries. Overthrow. Mike Seidman, the freshman from Westlake, had gotten a step on the receiver, but the pass was overthrown. Troy Dickerson, or the Trojan, was there. And we saw that exact same play in the first half when they got that mismatch with Seidman on Corey Dickerson, and McCann didn't see it. He went down the middle and was picked off. So the uh, Bruins trying to come back to a play that they should have hit earlier in the game. And Dickerson, a defensive lineman who can high jump 6'8", was back in the coverage for USC. And a flag down. Let me guess. Dead ball, ball start, offense. Still third down. And that is five false starts against UCLA. Trojans still leading in that category with seven. <laughs> They're up by two. And the, the, the Bruins are in real trouble, too, because their quarterback uh, has gone stone cold. Danny Farmer dropped a pass on him. But uh, right now, this kid's confidence has got to be at, at its lowest point. Randy Hakes, the tight end number 92, back to the win. Dan's and fires caught downfield. Nice pass. Stretching out is Danny Farmer trying to pick up the first down. 
Oh, Halende was there for the Trojans along with Daryl Knight. But this one was really drilled by Ryan McCann. And he did the smart thing. You, you just don't give up on a player like Danny Farmer just because he drops one pass. Good moving in the pocket. Now watch, Farmer's going to get help there from uh, Daryl Knight. Gets popped in the back there and gets close enough to bring out the chains for a measurement. Close enough to get the first down. Nope. But Fixie will come in to kick it away. 259 time remaining in the third. Reed Kelly is the return man for USC. Toledo has already tried a fake field goal in this game. It didn't work. This would not be a good time to try a fake punt. They have bad field position. And if something were to go wrong here, they turn the ball over to the Trojans with a short field. Helmets don't come flying out by accident. Somebody popped <laughs> Kareem a Kelly. Is it? <laughs> oh man, this is going to give uh, SC a free 15 yards. Jermaine Lewis, the guilty party on the play. Personal foul, face mask, 15 yard penalty, kicking team. Penalty enforced from the end of the kick, end of the run. First down 10. It's a good return by Kareem Kelly. Finally, the Bruins get him corralled. Now, watch number 23 right here. He grabs the face mask and then just rips the helmet right off Kelly's head. That, my friends, is a cheap shot and a half. Totally uncalled for. Totally unnecessary. And meanwhile, number 51, Tony Hunter of the Bruins, a linebacker, starting outside linebacker, was also shaken up on the play. And he came to the sideline, but he needed help to get to the sideline. McCullough on the carry, Coleman with the stop as we go to New York for an update, John. Charlie, it's the Burger King play of the day. Jared Payton, the youngster for Miami, wearing his dad's number 34, should have been stopped, but something carries him into the end zone for the touchdown, his first collegiate touchdown, and then points skyward to his father, Walter. Burger King play of the day. Charlie. And a very good choice. Tom McCullough, Paul Carrier, Ryan Neese. Charlie, Thanks I couldn't agree back. with you more on the choice of, of that play for Jared Payton. Walter Payton is a classmate of mine at the, in the 1993 Hall of Fame, Pro Football Hall of Fame, and got to meet young Jared back then when he inducted his dad into the uh, Hall of Fame. And I know that uh, they were closest of friends, and having played against Walter for many years and then being inducted as the same class, uh, that meant a lot to me. Jamari Jackson is the remaining back. Box throws on the one. This is complete, and it's RJ Sally. That's his second reception of the ball game. 47 on the year. And a first down for the Trojans, which is third reception. He just turns Ryan Rock completely around. A couple of seniors going at it. And RJ, you know he's going to talk after the catch. <laughs> Watch him get right into Rock's face. He's talking before the catch, usually. <laughs> Why wait? Still talking. First down, USC. Follow. McCullough. Dropped again by 
Kenyon Coleman. Providing our aerial shots is the Eagle, one of the global fleet of seven Goodyear blimps. And listen to this, they're going to be linked together on New Year's Eve to record the arrival of the millennium around the world. Now, I'm not sure if they're going to be linked in a row or they're going to be linked electronically <laughs> or by radio, but trust me, they're going to be linked. I hope they have a, a long, long line. Long, yeah. long line. <laughs> electronically, they're going to be linked. And if one of them has healing a problem, they'll be the missing link. <laughs> okay. Second attempt. Antoine Harris, the intended receiver. 40 seconds, time remaining in the third quarter. Score the same as it was at halftime. USC leading by three, 10 7. David Newberry for SC is a 22 yard field goal. Ryan McCann. As the Bruin touchdown from six yards out. And Fox to Creek Kelly for the SC touchdown. 10 7, the margin is three. With 92,000 fans. Fox can run, but he throws. And it is incomplete. In the end zone, Kareem Kelly was open. He had started to his right, was coming back, but he missed him. Eric Whitfield had the closest coverage for UCLA. Now let's check out where number 18 was on this play. Rock has got him short, and now it's a zone coverage. You might say he's wide open right here, huh? But sometimes the defensive backs, if they're in zone, are looking at the quarterback's eyes. They're going where he's looking. 43 yards on the field goal attempt by David Newberry, who has hit one and missed one. And we'll have a timeout. UCLA, number one. So the Bruins take their timeout. They now have two left in the half. The Trojans have two left in the half. Let's see what's coming up on ABC. ABC Sunday. Your ex-wife says she came out of the bathroom is what she found. A murder case hits close to home. You want to ask our son if he committed murder. An explosive new practice, ABC Sunday, 10, 9 Central. Don't I look good? Yeah, but can you help A&M stop Texas quarterback Major Applewhite? Hook them horns. <laughs> now where are we going? Husker power. Sounds like Nebraska, Colorado. The Huskers are in the national title hunt. Oh, hell. 34 seconds to go here in the third quarter, and it's just a 10-7 game, but let's show you some of the highlights that happened in the first half. Ryan McCann at the end of a drive where he hit four passes out of four attempts, takes it in from six yards out, then Sultan McCullough got loose for 48 yards, longest run of the year for the Trojans. And then finally, Kareem Kelly with a beautiful 22-yard pass reception from John Fox as he makes time stand still at the goal line. And now a 43-yard attempt. And this is a fake. And Fox rolls, and he throws. And the pass is complete to Jackson down the sideline. And out of bounds, they've got the first down. Ryan Rock finally took him out of bounds. So John Fox, he's normally the holder, and he rolled out to his right, and he completed the pass to Jabari Jackson right down the sideline. And for the first time in the ballgame, SC really opening up their bag of tricks. Really well designed. Here's Jackson. Watch him sneak behind the line of scrimmage. And Fox with the rollout. This man is wide open. There's the first down, and there's the extra yardage. Well, well done by SC. It will be first down and goal to go right at the 10 yard line. Here's McCullough for a couple of yards to the eight. Let's take another look at that play and we'll look at it real speed. It happened very quickly and the Bruins were totally caught off guard. It's good to have a quarterback as your holder for that one play right there. Second down, goal to go. As we run out of time, that is the end of the third quarter. We'll make half of the fans unhappy and the other half happy as we move to the other end. ABC Sports presentation of college football will return 
after this message and a word from our ABC station. Introducing ESPN Extra, the brand new channel for sports fans who can't get enough. On ESPN Extra, you get more of the sports you love, like international soccer from countries around the world. Plus, the UEFA Champions League, international auto racing, fitness, and outdoor programming. Plus, there's EXPN, which offers exciting extreme sports programming, all on pay-per-view around the clock all week long. Watch ESPN Now or your program guide to see what's on, then order exactly like you would for a pay-per-view movie. ESPN Extra, you can't do better than that. There's no glamour in going into the corners to dig and muck it up. The grinder is responsible for jumping into the fire and coming up with the prize. But the prize is not his for long if he wants to be successful. Because even though there's no glamour in being a grinder, there can be so much glory. The NHL on ESPN. This is the game. Start the fourth quarter. SC knocking on the door once again. In the third quarter, they knocked on the door at the one yard line and came away without anything. This time they're at the eight. Second down goal to go. Digs in and fights his way to the five yard line. He was almost down at the seven, but with a continuing effort, he got to the five. Should be an interesting fourth quarter as you can see both teams have struggled all year long so I guess it just turns out it's going to be even in the fourth quarter SC has got to take advantage of this opportunity though balls at the five it's been a long time since SC's had a penalty third down goal to go So it will be fourth down at the five yard line. Joey Strakula makes the makes the play as he tips the ball. Windrell Hayes, the intended receiver. Joey Strakula should have made the interception though. Poor decision by Fox trying to hit Hayes. Look at Strakula cut in front and it looked like he might have tripped on Hayes. Remember, this is a guy that sprained his foot in the first half. Not feeling any pain except for the pain of the missed interception. 22 yard field, a field goal attempt by David Newberry. And this one is good. And a flag is there. So hold the phone, don't put the three points up quite yet. Now, decision time. You take the points off the board. This is going to be against UCLA. Running into the kicker. Working the kicker. Defense. Penalty is accepted. Off the distance to the goal line. First down. Sure, it'll be it was the five yard line. It'll be two and a half yards away. There it is. No question about it. Ryan Rock at the bottom there. 
that might have sprained the knee of David Newberry. And unusual that uh, coaches hate to take points off the clock, oh, but the key here is that them. it's a first down, Charlie, from the two-yard line. Yeah. They still hate to think that was three for sure in the bank. But it only gave him a six-point lead. Yep. Morton is the tailback. He's the ball carrier. He comes back, leans inside. He's going to be just shy of the touchdown. So it'll be second down and goal to go. About half a yard away, perhaps. Chad Morton, though, following big number 75. But I see a Milo. There he is, 330 pounds of fullback. You heard the saying, one brick shy of the load? Well, he's the load that they're talking about, whatever they make the statement. He's the lead blocker. Morton is the tailback. Fumble on the snap. A flag is down. Fox recovered the fumble, but there is a marker on the play. This is another false start. This is deja vu. Prior to the snap, no play, false start. Offense, five-yard penalty. Still second down. From the one-yard line, and they've had a false start to push him back. The last time, if you'll recall, they didn't get any points. And they've just given three back to the Bruins. R.J. Sauer is in as a wide receiver on the near side. Here's the fade left side. It is caught for a touchdown. Kareem Kelly makes the play. With his second touchdown of the ball game, and he makes it over Ricky Manning Jr. And in Kareem Kelly, number 82, Trojan fans are going to see this for about three more years. Look at that ability. He was out of bounds. That's a bad call. His left foot came down first, and it was out of bounds. Newberry with the extra point attempt, and it is good. Take another look at this. Great effort by Kelly, but if you'll notice, his left foot is going to come down out of bounds. Perfect throw by Fox, and a blown call by the officials. about to have a close encounter with a very distant relative. He's a Martian. Martin. 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 Now, the question isn't when will alien life arrive. Martin. It's when will it leave. I'm inside. You've been asleep for 30 seconds. Wow. I really was tired. Uh, Disney's My Favorite Martian. Ready at PG.
Take one more look at this play. In college football, a defensive back can push a receiver out of bounds here. And if and he does, then it's voided. The play is voided. You're right. No touchdown. But again, Charlie, that goes right back to what makes this game and all rivalry games great. Got to mix in a little of that controversy. Meanwhile, SC has taken a 10 point lead on UCLA. Green Kelly with his second touchdown reception of the day. And as you know, in college football, you just need to come down with one foot inbound. In the pros, if you're in the air and you're pushed out of bounds, you land, then they give you the catch. Here they don't. That's what Dan was talking about. Let's go down to Todd. Thank you, Charlie. Well, I know there's not on the line here. Big robbery, though. The winner goes home with some hardware. This is the Jim Murray City Championship Trophy in honor of LA Times correspondent Jim Murray. The winner will get that. It was started last year. But the big prize is the victory bell. This has been with UCLA for eight years. It may go to USC if they can pull this thing out. But I can tell you right now, security is tight around this thing. They're telling me this thing has got to be off the field by the fourth quarter. So they're running behind. Back to you. Don't tell him, Todd. <laughs> 12.53, time remaining, we're in the fourth quarter. The Bruins have the ball. Blake Clock running down on Ryan McCann. And so that's the second time out now burned by the Bruins here in the second half. We're going to step aside for a moment. The USC leading by 10, 17 to seven. come to an end this weekend. But that doesn't mean you have to leave the worldwide leader in sports at home. Because the news, interviews, and analysis from your favorite ESPN personalities continues all day, every day on over 600 radio stations nationwide. Check your local listings to find the ESPN radio station near you. ESPN Radio. Take it with you. Bring the action home with ESPN Full Court, the ultimate college basketball package no die-hard hoops fan can live without. With over 450 college basketball games, you'll get to watch your favorite teams and conferences no matter where you live. ESPN Full Court, only on pay-per-view. It's maximum college basketball. To order, call your cable company, DirecTV, or Dish Network. Sean Foster has some running room, and he's going to pick up around six or seven yards. Daryl Knight makes the tackle. A most unusual last drive for SC. They fake the field goal, hit Jabari Jackson for 17 yards. Then they change ends and get a roughing the kicker penalty on Ryan Rock. And then, oh, what might have been called a touchdown was Kareem Kelly from five yards out. What a drive. That last rushing play by Deshaun Foster for eight yards has been their longest of the day until this one. And here is Foster again, out to the 50-yard line. And finally stopped at that point. The first man there was David Gibson, and Oalete was the second for the Trojan. But that just becomes the longest rushing play for the Bruins. And you know what, Charlie? It's, it's what they talked to us about on Thursday, running straight at USC. Nothing fancy. Don't try to go wide. Two plays in a row now that Foster's been able to hit the Bru uh, the Trojans right up the middle. And this one gets him all the way out to the 50-yard line. Jermaine Lewis now comes in. Foster takes a breather. Lewis the tailback. Play action fake to Lewis. Pressure and down. 
as McCain is sacked by Mike Childers, along with Abdul Malik as we go to New York for an update. Halftime, but Kevin Thompson has led him back. 12 yards to Eddie Drummond here. Then they go for the two-point conversion. It's good. They've added a field goal, and now the game is tied at 28 apiece. But how about these numbers? Ladanian Tomlinson of TCU, 406 yards and six touchdowns today. That's a 1A, 1AA, and Division II record. As we go back, this is Freddie Mitchell. Mitchell then to Foster. And the bag of tricks is being opened, perhaps, for good. From here on, we have 11 11 left. Charlie, a, a bad choice of uh, when to call this play. This is a first down type of play, not after you've lost yardage on a sack on the previous play. It's a the old hitch and lateral play. The hitch to Mitchell, and then the pitch to Foster. And the Trojans, because it's so long of yardage that the uh, Bruins needed are just in a soft zone. Very easy to recognize the trickery. Now third down and 20. From the shotgun, high snap, pull down. Set, stroke, pass is complete. Very quickly to Brad Melsby. Heck of a play by the senior Brad Melsby with a great corner route on Daryl Rideau, the true freshman. The pressure on McCann is pretty good. He makes a great catch of the bad snap, but he sees that Melsby has got his man turned around. Rideau, for some reason, playing way off into the inside. That was third and 20, and they convert. For a first down at the 34-yard line of the Trojan. Bruins trailing by 10. Still a lot of time in the ball game. Here's the pitch. Jermaine Lewis, the ball carrier. And he'll go to about the 31-yard line. Where Marino and Gibson team up to bring him down for USC. Right, the reason Daryl Rideau is in the ball game is because he's replacing Antoine Simmons, who hurt his back last week and had to have surgery on Thursday. So he's watching from the hospital as Daryl Rideau, the true freshman, and his education is continuing. Second down. Play action fake, throwing on the run. He's made great improvement going to Darrell Rice. You mentioned Antoine Simmons. Well, his teammate Chris Richard has a message for him. I just want to tell you that, uh, like every game, I'll, I'll give my best, try and get home, take home this victory. And if something big happens to me for that game, in that game, you'll be the first one to know about it because I'm looking into that camera and that play will be dedicated to you, man. Dedicated to Antoine Simmons. He's at USC University Hospital. He had surgery to remove some pressure on his spinal cord a couple of days ago. UCLA now picks up the first down. This is Jermaine Lewis. He's stopped by David Gibson along with Abdul Malik. David Gibson with another tackle. And again, it's uh, UCLA running straight at the Trojans. Gibson gets inside the pulling guard, Brian Polak there, trying to get a block on him. Dan, not so long ago, the Bruins had only rushed for a total of 20 yards of the ball game. Now, all of a sudden, they're able to be effective. What's happened? They have simplified it, Charlie. They're just going straight ahead instead of trying to trick the Trojans. Play action fake, throws into coverage, and it is incomplete, and a flag is down. A covering flag is there. Gabe Prishon was the intended receiver, and David Gibson may have gotten to him before the football did. And congratulations to Stanford. They defeat Cal. That is now a final. Stanford 31 to 13 for California, and Stanford is going to the Rose Bowl. Charlie oh, gets... they're celebrating at Palo Alto. A, a month or so back, I got a chance to talk to both Plunkett and Don Bunce about the Rose Best Bowl. Interference. Defense, ball placed at the spot, first down, goal. And, and you know the one thing, that neither of them talked about uh, a certain play in the game or uh, the feeling they had. They always, they talked about how much they miss their teammates and how important it was as a team for them to accomplish those two great victories against the Big Ten. That's what college football is in reality all about, isn't it? 
Absolutely. Now they get to see Ron Dane. <laughs> Foster. Fumble. SC has the ball. The junior from Los Alamitos comes up with the football. That is the third turnover by the Bruins, two interceptions and a fumble. And you know, when the ball was bouncing around on the ground, it looked like Bryce Bolander, the true freshman from Salem, Oregon, had a shot at the recovery. Watch him come in from the right side of the screen here. There's Bolander, he just bounces right over the top of the ball. And Olete is down there digging and getting it. And Oalete is the man who stripped the ball, and he ends up with the recovery. And SC has the ball at their own five-yard line coming out first down. Just a little bit there for Chad Morton, maybe a yard, and that's about it. Turnovers and penalty. And missed opportunities. You go back to that first half, and the Bruins had a real chance to put the game away. Had three possessions inside the 30-yard line and didn't get any points out of it. Here's that critical fumble by Deshaun Foster. There's Ohalete with the right hand, got help from Gibson there. There's Bolander just bounced right on top of the ball and not being able to recover. Second down and nine. Morton again. And he'll be pushed back. He's going to pick up about three more. Defense led by Ryan Neese along with Pete Holland. And you can tell that that senior captain uh, has listened to what Paul Hackett talked about, about carrying the ball, securing it against your body, because you're not only carrying it for yourself, you're carrying it for your teammates, your coaches. Heck, you're carrying it for the entire history of USC football. And as a two-time captain, <laughs> it's a lot to carry. <laughs> That's a heavy football. <laughs> Whoa. Third down and five. Sowers splits wide to the near side. And off it's Ted to Morton, the line of scrimmage, and that is it. Not taking any chances. Kenyon Coleman making the tackle, and the kicking team will come out. Bruins will have good field position, but their time starting to become a bit of a factor. 727 and flying away is counting down. And the other factor, Charlie. They only have one timeout remaining. Down by 10. Here's the kick, a low line drive. Very returnable. Manning Jr. gets to the far side, has a block, has the corner. Flag is down, and he's out of bounds. Block may have been in the back. Well, the man who threw it certainly thinks so. <laughs> Near the conclusion of today's game, we'll be selecting a Chevrolet player of the game from each team. Chevrolet will make a $1,000 contribution to each university's general scholarship fund. During the return, illegal block in the back. Return team, 10-yard penalty from the spot. First down. And beginning this year, Chevrolet will also donate two $1,000 high school scholarships. All right, we'll step aside. We'll be back in just a moment. SC leads by 10. Subscribers to ESPN the magazine, like Marcus Canby, really look forward to each issue. Here's my magazine. Get 26 issues for a dollar an issue, and this fleece pullover is free. It's a warm, roomy fleece pullover with an embroidered ESPN the magazine logo. Hey, man, that's my ESPN the magazine. Go order your own. Call now for ESPN the magazine and free fleece pullover. Good evening, everyone. I'm Howard Cosell. Touchdown! Lord, you can take me now. I've seen it all. That is the end of one of the great games in the annals of Monday Night Football. 30 years of making Monday Night special. This week, Oakland, Denver at 9 Eastern, 6 Pacific. Professor Tom Jackson tries integrating real-life experiences into his curriculum. <laughs> So now, when his students write about a blitzing defense, they'll use stronger words like hemorrhage.
First down Bruins their own 40 yard line. Pressure and the sack. Matt Childers has his second sack of the ball game. Well, UCLA has nobody to blame but themselves for the predicament they've they're in. Here's a, another sack, sixth on the day now for UCL for UCLA's offensive line that they've given up, and that one is a huge loss of 10 yards. Back to the 30 yard line, second down and 20. And officials timeout. This is an injury timeout. Yeah, McCann's hurt. Childers landed on top of him. This was similar to the way that Corey Paws got hurt earlier in the year. Now McCann's saying, hey, I just need a minute. But the officials saying, you're going to have to leave the game. And Scott McCune will come on at least for one play. But when Corey Paws fell on the ball earlier in the year, he separated his sternum. And he wasn't the same quarterback since then. And here are some of the missed opportunities in the ball game for UCLA. McCann with uh, one of his two interceptions. The tip drill works pretty good for SC. Oalete to Gibson. And then a fake field goal where Jerry Strikula comes up a yard short after they tried one from 47 yards out. A drop pass by Freddie Mitchell. And this last one, a fumble by Freddie or by uh, Deshaun Foster at the five yard line. All three of UCLA's turnovers today have happened inside SC's 30 yard line, including that one from the five. Scott McEwen, number eight, is now in. He's a thousand oak sophomore. And he is coming in cold. He did not have any opportunity to warm up at all. He goes deep into coverage and uh, tip incomplete at the 30 yard line. Freddie Mitchell, the annoyed, was it Danny Farmer? No, it was Freddie Mitchell, with the intended receiver. And Daryl Rideau has the coverage on him. And you know, Rideau has been picked on a lot today. That was a great play by number two. McCann back in the game. But you know, I like that play call for McCune. Doesn't take a whole lot to do uh, for a quarterback. It's just let her rip. Look at the coverage by Rideau. Cuts off Freddie Mitchell and just doesn't allow him to get anywhere near the ball. Great play. So Ryan McCann back now in the ball game. And he's in the shotgun. With three wide receivers on third down and 20. Rolling left. He's a left hander. Sets. Throws back over the middle. And it is incomplete. He was going to Brad Melsby. It'll be fourth down and 20 with six minutes and 15 seconds, and a flag is down at the 23 yard line. And this may be roughing the passer against USC. McCann's on a controlled rollout here. Good block there by Creshawn. He sets the throw, and he gets drilled by. Corey Dickerson, unbelievable on a play where you're going to get the ball back to you, you commit another penalty. I believe it was Abdul Sahid that got it. All right. For USC, that is their 16th penalty. They've been averaging right 10 a ball game down. Yep. 16 penalties, 126 yards. And if this game turns around, that one there is the most inexcusable that you'll ever see. Ball was gone for a good two seconds. First down, 45 yard line. Play action fake, protection. Hangs it high, and it is incomplete. That one was up for grabs. Farmer, the intended receiver. Tomorrow on ESPN, the New Orleans Saints go to Jacksonville to face Mark Brunel and the first place Jaguars. Then Monday on ABC in a heated rivalry dating back to the AFL games back to 1960. The Denver Broncos take on Tim Brown on the Oakland Raiders. The 30th anniversary season of Monday Night Football continues. That is Monday live at 9, 6 Pacific on ABC Sports. Charlie, the worst thing that happened on that play is that Farmer came up limping after the uh, incompletion. He's had a problem with his groin. He's had a problem with an ankle. He's having a problem catching the ball today. Second down and ten. 
Can, Can was stationary, he wanted to move out, he couldn't, and he throws to Farmer. Kevin Arbett putting the pressure on the quarterback of the Bruins. This is what happened just two plays ago. Chris Richard rolls up on the back of Farmer's right foot. And that uh, is definitely a foot sprain. You see him grab for it right away. That's probably why he couldn't adjust to that uh, underthrown pass by McCann. Third down and 10. McCann sets, fires, pass is complete. It'll go to about the 50-yard line. That'll still be shy of the first down. Jermaine Lewis on the receiving end, and Zeke Marino was there for the Trojans. Dan, let me ask you now, because we have 5.48 left. How has Ryan McCann played on the situation where he had all week long to prepare, and for all week long he knew that he was going to be the starting quarterback? First time that he's faced this. You know, he's played like a Richard freshman, hot and cold. He's had streaks where he's, he's allowed his receivers to make plays, but then he's been erratic. The pressure, the pressure from SC has been on him constantly today. Fourth down, they'll go for it. Here comes everybody. Throws it back, it is caught, but it will be for a loss. FC holds, they take over on downs. Foster on the receiving end. Ojalete was right there along with Abdul Malik, who was putting the pressure on the quarterback. It looked like the whole world was crashing in on Ryan McCann except one man. He is going to watch the tailback. Ojalete sees Foster sneak it out on the screen pass. He's there, the ball is underthrown, and a big play finally without any penalties for USC. Abdul Malik and Lonnie Ford were both applying the pressure to Ryan McCain. It is SC by 10, 17, 7, 5, 10 left in the game. The background of the University of Southern California. There's the Natural History Museum over to the venerable Los Angeles Memorial Coliseum, built in originally in 1927 for the Fiesta. And then, of course, expanded in 32 for the Olympic Games, 84 for the Olympic Games. So many great events have been held here. Chad Martin stopped by Robert Thomas. And those shots that you're seeing from the Goodyear blimp, and whenever it's hovering above a game, uh, you know that you're going to get a unique view, and you know that it is a very important sporting event overhead. The Goodyear blimp eagle. I've always wanted, I've always wanted the pilot to kind of wiggle. You know, to he is. Put it up and down. <laughs> that, and is a, that is a blimp wiggle. Is that a blimp wiggle? Yes, it is. Well, it's in my honor, and I appreciate it very much. I've been looking forward to that for many years. Watch closely. Yes. Second down, here's Morton, and he is stopped right at the line of scrimmage, stopped by Coleman. And let's get an upstate, uh, update on what's going on with the pair of states. John? Charlie, as we told you, Penn State came back from down 28-7 to tie it, but too much T.J. Duckett out of Kalamazoo. His fourth touchdown run of the game and then after an interception, Michigan State looks like they'll hold off Penn State. Meanwhile, Wake Forest beats Georgia Tech 26 to 23. Joe Hamilton's Heisman hopes may have gone with it. Back to the Coliseum in Los Angeles, the battle between the USC and UCLA with the eight game winning streak for the Bruins on the line. Morton again stopped by Coleman. Clock at 3.40 and counting. And uh, here are the bowl championship uh, series standings. Florida State, Virginia Tech, Nebraska, Florida, Tennessee, Alabama, Wisconsin, K-State, Texas, Michigan. Not too much is going to change, I don't believe. Now, Vought Tech was very impressive beating the team that beat them last year in Temple. And Nebraska was idle. Here's the kick. You'll find BCS online at ESPN.com, part of the Go Network. Meanwhile, the Bruins need to go. They still have time. We're moving on the three-minute mark. Time remaining as Ricky Manning returns the kick. Kevin Arbett was the first man there. And Troy Pulamalu, who uh, was not able to play last week but could uh, play this week, is here, and he makes the play. And guess what? We got another penalty, Charlie. Oh, uh, that does not surprise me. I'm amazed at the amount of penalty. Flag day. Dead ball after the play. Personal foul. 
Offense, personal foul, defense, penalties offset, first down. ABC Sports presentation of college football is brought to you by Ford F-Series. The best-selling trucks are built Ford Tough by Dell Computer, pioneering direct internet ideas for your business. Be direct, Dell. By Tostitos, dig in, kick back, and by the U.S. Army. Be a part of the toughest, smartest army in the world. Be all that you can be. First down, 15-yard line, coming in. McCann's pass is intercepted. Trojans have the ball. Fourth turnover, David Gibson with his second interception of the game. Danny Farmer, the intended receiver. Three interceptions and a fumble recovery by the FC defense. And the Bruins held defensively to one fumble recovery. Very soft zone here. Watch the two safeties. Here's Gibson and Ojalente. Farmer's going to come in from the, the right side of the screen here. And McCann just telegraphs this one. Easy pickoff for Gibson, his second of the day. Here's Ryan McCann, redshirt freshman, 6'4", 217 pounds. But like you said, he's a redshirt freshman and he had that kind of performance. Not controlled up and down, has a great future. Here's Morton stretching out to the 25 yard line where uh, Kenyon Cullen makes the tackle. The official attendance today, we've been calling it 92,000. We weren't that far off. 91,384, 91,384 in the Coliseum for this, the 69th meeting. The streak, UCLA, looks as if it was going to come to a close. Eight in a row. And there is David Gibson and his two interceptions. He is the senior from Mission Viejo. Fall over, fall over. What a workhorse he has been in this ball game, and again, Coleman is there. It's almost a personal matchup. And, and Charlie, you know, each coach has his favorite player. Well, David Gibson is Bill Young's favorite player. He's been asked to change positions. Bill told me that if he could clone one player and uh, fill out an entire football team, it would be a player such as David Gibson. Senior captain coming up with big plays today in his final game against UCLA. Thank you. Chad Morton in the ballgame has rushed for 130 yards. He's over 1,000 for the season. He has 32 carries thus far. He now has 33 carries, and that is a career high, and it is not over yet. And, Charlie, that's why they're captains. Morton, a two-time captain. He guaranteed the victory back in August, and he put his money where his mouth is and his performance. And Paul Hack and his head coach said, you know, I really like that. I like that. I want them to feel that way. I don't hide it. If you feel that way, then feel that way. I feel like we ought to go to a break, so we'll step aside. We'll be back. Don't go, don't you go away in a moment. With now one minute and 34 seconds left for the Trojans to stop the streak of the Bruins, who have won the last eight games in a row. R.J. Soward is at the top of the screen. Here's Morton again. He just kind of leans in. Next Saturday, Spain's El Nino, Sergio Garcia, competes in his first Skins game. He'll be joining Freddie Couples, Marco Mira, David Duval in one of America's favorite Thanksgiving traditions. It's always fun to watch the Skins game. It's a feast on the green for the green. Next Saturday at 1.30 Pacific on ABC Sports. Yeah, it's interesting that SC didn't try a field goal there, Charlie. Uh, but in talking to Paul Hackett, he said that field goals scare him to death, and for good reason. They have struggled with uh, field goals all year long. Didn't want to risk a bad snap or a blocked kick. Bruins have a first down. They have a minute and 28 seconds remaining. is cut loose and the SC Trojans have recovered it. It was a completed pass and then a handoff on a reverse downfield. A hook and ladder uh, over the middle if you want to call it to Danny Farmer. It came out and Zeke Marino recovered the fumble. That is five turnovers by the Bruins. Farmer's trying to get the ball to Deshaun Foster. Here's Farmer over the middle. Watch Foster come out. 
And Moreno gets there and he spoils the party. And the Trojans are all over it. And so SC takes over with a minute and 21. The ball just outside the 23 yard line of UCLA. And Morton is the tailback. And we expect to see him just run right up the middle of the line. SC should be content to sit on this score. And here is Morton, and he pops through. Oh, one step away from scoring another touchdown. And speaking of Chad Morton, today's Chevrolet players of the game are Ryan Neese of UCLA and Chad Morton of USC in recognition of their efforts. Chevrolet will make a $1,000 contribution to each university's general scholarship fund. And beginning this year, Chevrolet will also donate $1,000 to two high schools. So congratulations to both of them. Ryan Neese, nine tackles in the ball game. Chad Morton has rushed 35 times, now 36. We're about 145 yards, somewhere in that neighborhood. Because it is a continuing action as far as he is concerned. 33 seconds in counting. There could be one more play. But Charlie, I just want to wish you a, a very happy Thanksgiving coming up. We really appreciate you stepping in here for Keith Jackson this week. It's a, a lot of fun. Keith took the weekend off to go visit his brand new granddaughter. I've enjoyed it, Dan, as always. Great fun. And our crew down in the truck, Mark Loomis, David Kiviat, Brian Fay, D-Mob, Denuncio, Everybody had a good time with it. And now the celebration begins as the USC Trojans have stopped the streak of the Bruins. USC 17, UCLA 7. I'm Charlie Jones for Dan Fouts and Todd Harris. ABC Sports is online at ESPN.com, part of the Go Network. This has been a presentation of ABC Sports, continuing the tradition of excellence.